So yeah, it's it's mm. yeah, it's always it's, exciting. It's, it is, dude. And I see like everybody that I find on Instagram that I'm following, like I see your name on there too, followed by one stupid fuck. <laughs> I'm like right on. So so you keep tabs on other people that are that are teaching this and, and talking about this, I guess. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, explain that a little bit more. Oh, just like uh, Man's Matha on Instagram and oh yeah, uh, Manza, Paths yeah. to Freedom and uh i don't know yeah. i think yeah just i see you that you're following them too so i'm like okay cool you know what i mean like because i don't know it's just fun to see the different people with receipts and uh just uh i don't know i like i said i'm just learning as much as i can at this point and so and man's mathis class is tomorrow so, i'll be there i'll be there cool dude yeah that'll be fun that'll be yeah. fun so yeah he's the only one that i really follow like aggressively uh another guy that i follow somewhat aggressively is uh, a, a, a moorish lighthouse official He's he's focused mainly now on uh, adverse possession. He like really niched down like hard. Uh, I think adverse possession is cool, but I I I kind of miss his old, more more generic style. I I mean I I'm I'm a marketing guy. Like I understand niching is the smartest thing in the world, but I don't know. I just he was just so fucking good at what he did. I just ugh. and who's and, this? and I just feel like his name is Moorish Lighthouse Official. Oh okay yeah. Black guy with like a with like a kind of a flat top, okay. bro. He is like, oh man, he's fucking great, dude. I mean, really, really, really fucking good. Right on. Uh, especially, I hate to say it, his adverse possession stuff is fucking awesome. I haven't studied it too much. He's got a book now. He's doing all this stuff. Almost everything he brings up is adverse possession, which is basically like, uh, you can just move into a house. It's just like chilling there, an abandoned house. And within like a handful of years, you legally own the house. It's basically called adverse possession. Um, he he got the house that he's living in through adverse possession. It's cool. Don't get me wrong. It's great. I just, I just, his older videos, if you scroll down, look at his older videos, it was more generic. And he would cover like all sorts of things. Like one time he got his hands on an entire copy of uh, Corpus Juris Secundum, which is like a whole bookshelf full of shit. And then he did this whole thing where he's like, all right, now I got all these books. Now we're going to fucking go through them and we're going to fucking, you know, and he was like going through uh, uh, CJS uh, and he was like picking out fucking insane shit and like reading it. And I was like, oh my God, this is totally fucking insane. And then he came off of that and then he niched down to adverse possession, which, you know, I... I wish he would do the his old style or or maybe maybe he'll cycle it. Like maybe he'll do adverse possession for like a little while and then he'll like switch over to something else because I just so these his, are books his material just, is just so so fucking good, man. I'm telling so these you, are just, just books of like all sorts of crazy law knowledge that that what pertains in in what way? Like like what was it? Oh, with him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Corpus like, Jurisdictum is just a it's just a whole fucking bookshelf full of like court cases and all sorts of crazy shit oh i got you okay cool uh it's it's um it means second body of law corpus juris secundum uh okay and and it's just a it's just a i don't really know i think it's just really powerful like constitutional case law or something i'm not totally 100 percent sure exactly what it all is but i i think it's it's like applicable case law very powerful applicable case law and uh uh he got a free copy of it which is like a twenty thousand dollars of the books or something fucking totally insane or fifty thousand dollars of the books wow and some lawyer was retiring and just gave it to him and he did a whole instagram thing on it and he was like yo check this out look at look what somebody gave me and he like bought the bookshelf and was putting the bookshelf in and and he's like yeah we're about ready to fucking tear some shit up with these books wow. and uh, uh another guy that i really like is uh state nationals rock this is a white guy he's cool he's cool he's he's uh he's he's got a lot of passion 
Uh, I like his stuff some. I mean, I'm pretty I'm pretty centric into the finances right now, so I just focus on Monza pretty much exclusively. Like anytime something comes up that he's has to say, I usually watch that. I don't spend a lot of time consuming content. I spend most of my time uh, uh, making it. So, right. you know, yep. uh, even though I follow a lot of these people, I, I really don't necessarily not, look at a them, lot right? of what, yeah. I mean, sometimes I do, or, or a, little, a little bit, like sometimes I do, but just, it's not like, um, you know, I need breaks too. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you seem to be, I don't know. <laughs> You, you you're you're definitely a high iq individual you know what i mean i know you say that you don't need to be that to do this and that's cool but like clearly when you got obsessed by it you went above and beyond what a lot of people are going to do with this stuff like i'm eventually going to get to the point where I'll, on my web page which my web page is kind of weekend warrior you know what i mean it really just takes you to my videos which was my point when i got into doing any of this and um you know, so uh, I'll eventually get a page on there where I lay out some laws and I talk about some shit and I get through it. But I've got to even do it first. You know what I mean? I'm I'm still at that point of like making sure I got all my ducks in a row and and going over that. Yeah. So that's kind of what we should talk about today is and, and that and, and whatever, wherever the conversation goes, dude, because honestly, like, you know, I've been on the radio now for about a year and I've been doing podcasts for uh, about a year and a half or two. And I, you know, the one thing I know, I'm not huge. I'm not that popular or whatever, but like all my guests, I love being on this show because I don't really have a, an agenda and I just let it yeah. go with the flow and wherever we go is where it goes. And it's always, it always goes good because you then in this position would be like, I can say whatever I want and talk about whatever I want. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hell yeah. Of, it Hell makes yeah. it more fun. Plus I know what the hell's going on at least a little bit. I'm not completely new to this. You know what I'm saying? So, and I've yeah. seen most of your shit. So. I'm, I, it, it'll, it'll make it a little easier to kind of, you know, communicate some of this stuff, but, but we should start with kind of a little elementary stuff too, you know, like just the beginning kind of stuff, because I mean, a lot of people are going to start, you know, saying, well, you know, how, how do we get started? And I'm, I'm not really there. I, I kind of know what I need to do, but I, I think a lot of people might not. So, um, we should at least brush across that. How to get started. Uh, I don't recommend like, that you get started. I mean, that's, that's the honest truth. Uh, what I recommend is that you study until you feel confident. Uh, I am opening up a, a law group and I'm going to have a whole services section and all this stuff. I'm actually just put my 30 day notice in at my day job that I've had for eight years. Uh, I'm building up my website. I hired, uh, I did 99 designs. I'm designing a, a logo right now. Uh, you can see it on my, uh, my social media. Uh, that's just about wrapped up. And then the website is probably, uh, 60 or 70 percent completed the url is already uh bought and the email is already set up so i just have to nice. finish writing it and i'm going to have a, a whole services section um but the thing is is that i'm not going to do any services for anyone who doesn't understand this is not this is not really an area where you can just do this shit for somebody nope. um because the thing is, is that they're going to get one stupid ass letter from anybody and they're going to come crying, begging, totally freaking out, shaking violently. Uh, it, it's not a good, it's not a good client relationship. It's, it's horrible. And I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's going to be expensive as fuck, obviously. But uh, at the same time, like I'm going to pick and choose my clients because I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, get myself involved in some stupid ass shit. So you need uh, somebody that needs a hand up, not entirely lifted up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be basically like, I'm going to assist people yeah. to do it themselves. Right. And I'll be available starting, uh, in the next week, oh, week shit. and a half, two weeks. Beautiful for that. Okay. And uh, it'll it include, that's your, that's the thing. Sorry to interrupt, but that's the thing that you threw up on your Instagram, huh? The, uh, uh, Williams and Williams. Yes. Right on, yeah. man. Right on. Yeah, it's going to have a lot of cool stuff on there. Uh, it's going to have a bunch of research that I'm working on right now that has never been released on. Uh, it's going to have a very, very detailed breakdown as to why it's 100% completely legal uh, to to behave as a lawyer, to to act as a lawyer, to literally operate as a lawyer, to have a law firm to charge people for law services and to speak openly about the law without any worries of any sort of prosecution or difficulty. Uh, I'm going through all of these special codes that I've never talked about before called the uh, professional and business code. Uh, 
and then certain state codes and then other codes as well. And I'm digging up a lot of information and I'm piecing it together. So some of it's obviously going to be a lot of the stuff I've already talked about, like the locational stuff, especially, but there's going to be a whole second layer to it. Um, and, and basically what it is, is going to be all of the evidence that allows absolutely anyone to operate as a lawyer, literally today, legally, you can actually charge people and you can do it as a profession today. Wow. And it's going to be all of the research as to that uh, is going to be put on the, um, the, the, my law firm site. Cool, man. I feel like that's important because a lot of people are like, how in the hell are you, you know, people who have been following me for a long time, they get it, but, but kind of new ish people, they're like, how in the hell is this legal? Obviously. Right. Yeah. So that's going to be a huge part of, of the website. And I've never really completely codified all of that before. I've partially codified it on my, uh, on one stupid fuck dot com but but i never really like took the time to completely utterly lock it down um so that's that's kind of a lot of what's happening now and then and then yeah like you said i'm gonna have a bunch of services one of the services is going to be uh, uh my law firm letterhead a uh, personalized letter from me sent registered mail to someone's uh job if they're having a difficult time getting their w-a-b-e-n's or getting their exemptions for taxes so you spend like a thousand or two thousand dollars with me, and 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 I'll do what I can to make you tax free for the rest of your career. Uh, it's a pretty fucking good deal. Um, it doesn't take me very long to do that. Obviously, uh, it's about a thousand dollars an hour I'll be charging. Um, uh, another thing that I'll be offering is to do revocations of elections for people. I don't really see why anyone would hire me for that. I'm very open about that. Uh, it's very easy to do, but. Dude, honestly, the more I realize, the more, I, you know, people just want to support me. People just want to communicate with me. People just want to be close to me. Uh, and 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 they, if they know that the, the, the information is accessible for free and they still want to pay me to do it, hey, you know what? Fine. Uh, as long as you're not dumb as hell and as long as you're tracking with what's going on and you've done most of the course and you can kind of talk to me and, and prove to me that you, you, you've got some, some sense to this then uh, I'll be more than happy to do that. I'll be doing a, uh, a passport service where you're going to fly into California and uh, it's going to be the full deal. I'll help you fill out the paperwork. It's There's going to be a special version of the explanatory statement where I'm actually going to be giving the person uh, the oath myself and then signing in front of the notary myself personally on the oath. Um, that's going to be a pretty expensive service, probably like somewhere in the 10 to $15,000 range. And then I go with them personally to the... Uh, the passport office. Wow. Um, so, so I'm writing up the, the services page right now and uh, it's going to contain all of those services plus a bunch of other ones and um, very unique services, obviously uh, sure, services yeah. that everybody wants and you can't really find anywhere. And then it's just going to be very, very clear. There's going to be like an important note at the top and it's going to say, look, everything that, that I do here, I teach for free and you can do it for free. Uh, if you want to pay me, then, then fine. And and if you pay me, you're going to be supporting mostly my advertising because that's going to be, you know, I want to make, uh, I want to make right now, my goal is to make uh well, obviously cracking infinite money would be the best thing in the world, which we're working on. But in the meanwhile, uh, my goal is to start making somewhere around the 60 to $70,000 mark. And then, and then, uh, uh, 50 or 60,000 of that is going to go toward advertising and marketing. Uh, per month. And that's still, uh, that was my goal that I mentioned at the end of the contract killer course. And it's still the same goal I have now. Uh, I'm just much closer to it. Nice. And once I start doing $50,000 a month, then it's going to be a hundred thousand dollars a month. Once I hit a hundred thousand dollars a month, then it's going to be 150, 200, 250, half a million, a million, million and a half, 2 million, 20 million, 50 million, $150 million a month. Um, <laughs> Every every single penny I can possibly get my hands on uh, is going to go towards this. By definition, is a crusade. By definition, right. So um, people like the idea of supporting that, uh, even if they can do things themselves. They like the idea of supporting the movement. They do. So um, all of that's going to be included in. Uh, the the law law firm or law group or whatever you want to call it, and that's going to be coming out uh, very soon. Yeah, what right. is you? What, what is the um, stipulation on that? Like, do you have to call it something special? Like, 
And also, counsel. Is that what you would call yourself? Is that how you would refer to yourself? Like if people no a agent. Or... Agent. Oh, just agent. Okay. If you look up, uh, if you look up, basically, just to just to kind of cover this a little bit, because I haven't fully, I've written it partially, but I haven't written it completely. Okay. If you type in uh, "attorney in fact" into the internet, you'll see um, an attorney in fact and an agent are essentially the same things. There are two different terms to describe a power of attorney, right? Uh, so when you do a power of attorney with somebody, you become what's called an attorney in fact, right? And uh, I'm on investopedia.com and it says here, um, attorney in fact, right? Mm -hmm. uh, an attorney in fact, also called an agent, is a person who is authorized to act on behalf of another person known as the principal. So it's the same agent principal relationship that we talk about with the public corporation, the the ends legacy, the all caps name. Uh, but it's with somebody else, right? Yeah. And uh, the principal usually de designates someone as their attorney, in fact, by assigning them power of attorney, although a court may choose to assign it if the person being represented is incapacitated. The rules regulating power of attorney vary from state to state. It says uh, an attorney, in fact, is not necessarily a lawyer, which is hilarious. That It's so vague. You can't find any real information anywhere. They, they want it to be that way, right? On purpose. Okay. Yeah. Because the fact is, is that attorneys in fact, and an attorney or lawyer is the same exact fucking thing. Okay. Yeah, I see that here. That's crazy. It's like now, now it gets crazier because if you, it, it says here, and this is from investopedia.com. We're looking at an attorney. In fact, you can type it in yourself. It says here, an attorney, in fact, is not necessarily a lawyer. Indeed. Attorneys, in fact, don't need any special qualifications at all. They can be a family member or close friend. Uh, power of attorney may also be granted to more than one person. So the thing is, is that uh, this is one of the key aspects um, that allows you to uh, operate as an attorney or as a lawyer and get paid instantaneously today and for free. Uh, it says here, the attorney, in fact, is not required to be an actual lawyer, but they must act in the best interests of the principal and follow any instructions or guidelines set forth in the power of attorney, the, the contract. I mean, you can, you can replace power of attorney with contract, right? Right, right, sure. Now, now where this comes from, where this comes from, and I'm, I'm going to break all this down on my website. This is my current main area that I'm, I'm, I'm putting together, right? Oh, nice, this okay. Comes from, this comes from 15 USC 1. And it says here in 15 USC 1, every contract uh, combination in the form of trust or otherwise or conspiracy and restraint of trade or commerce among the several states or with foreign nations is declared to be illegal. Every person who shall make any contract or engage in any combination or conspiracy hereby declared to be illegal shall be deemed guilty of a felony. And if on conviction thereof shall be fun punished by a fine, not exceeding $100 million if it's a corporation. Wow. It's if it's an individual person, it's a million dollars. Wow. And they can be imprisoned by not more than 10 years. Damn. So what that means is, is that if you if you act as though you are a lawyer mm -hmm. without a power of attorney, it's a bit risky. It's actually substantially risky, especially if you're filed as a U.S. citizen. If you're not filed as a U.S. citizen, you're filed as a foreign national, you're not even in the United States. You're not even in state of California. So the state and federal laws don't apply to you at all, right? Mm -hmm. So what's happening is at that point, and it even says in 15 USC 1, it says, uh, um, that was what it was, uh, among the several states or with foreign nations. So the Amnesty Coalition would be a foreign nation. So it's a foreign nation contracting with another person in that nation or another foreign nation. Now, uh, that contract would be protected under 15 U.S.C. 1. And um, can the government involve themselves in the contracts of people privately? I know there's some really serious information about this. Um, 
Uh, let's see here. I forget. It's been a while since I've covered this. Uh, can, can stop people from contracting. Let's see here. So I just got a power of attorney over my mom and I had, I got a lawyer to do it. Right. So, and that's because this happened before, before I knew about any of this at all, but just barely before. So what power did he have other than that? I paid him to, and what did he do? How did he make it so that I actually have power of attorney over my mom? Like, I mean, there's obviously a stamp on it. It's notarized. It's signed by somebody. Is that all he did? Write it up in a, in, in a, in a way that, and they said their, their power of attorney is dur the durable one is huge. It's got all these, you know, people, Oh, it won't help us with this. So he rewrote it so that it helps with that. So it's got 30 rewrites in it. So it's super powerful. It can get you through anything just about. So other than that, the fact that he wrote it up and said, here's how shit is. And this guy says yes. And she says it's cool and blah, blah, blah. And we stamped it. And there you go. That's all he did. That's all his part was in it. That's why he got paid. Most likely, uh, especially the more I meet people in this industry. You, do you realize that Jesus only uh, only warned people about one profession? Yeah. yeah. That should tell you something. Mm -hmm. I'm not a Christian, but, I, you know. I believe yeah. there was a man in Jesus Christ that walked this earth and did some pretty fucking miraculous things. And he was a wonderful individual. I don't care what anybody fucking says. I believe that hundred mm -hmm. percent. Uh, he was, he, he was only, he was the kindest, gentlest soul in the world, but he said, be careful about one, one profession, one profession. Okay. Chances are he had a form letter that he has had and used 80 trillion times. He changed a few of the sentences and then printed it off and had you notarize it. Right. Well, so maybe, mom maybe... Sign it. my mom had to sign 15 things because this was her giving her power of attorney to me. And he had to basically sit there with her for a few minutes because she's already pretty far down the slope as far as like being able to recognize and be cognitive. So he wanted to sit with her for five minutes to make sure she wasn't like under duress. I'm sure that's what it was about. Oh, of course. Of course. And, and then I came back in and he said, cool, he, uh, like really, this is what it'll be for. So I got uh, uh, the, the durable power of attorney and then the financial power of attorney. And we read, uh, re, re, uh, he wrote up a will and then a deed for the house and put me on the deed too. So, well, the, the will and the deed is different. That's a little different. Yeah. Okay. The, the will and the deed is probably the same thing, but I've never done one of those. Okay. Um, the you, whole point I told him, I said, I just want to avoid probate court. I didn't know it much better at the time. What's funny though, check this story out. This is cool. So I started, I was on like, I don't know, class 10 with you. Right. And then I go yeah. back in to meet with him and I just couldn't help myself, man. I unloaded and by class 10, I've learned some shit. You know what I mean? I, I, I absorbed really well what you said up to class. I maybe even on 12 or 13, I was up there to the point where I was explaining shit to him and telling him about the tax code and, t and just bringing up things. And he was just like, I mean, he was just, his mouth was open. You know what I'm saying? And he was just like, well, and he was really cool about it. He was, he was like a great arguer, uh, a partner for this because he wasn't really trying to be a dick, but he was arguing, right? He was like, well, this and that and the other. And I'm like, well, this and that and the other. And he was like, well, shit. And then he got to the point of telling me, oh, oh, title 26 is a, is a law. I said, you've got the tablet right in your hand. Let's look it up. And he just wouldn't do it. And I'm like, okay. oh, you brought up uh 7806 that talks about uh 7806 section two. It talks about how everything in the tax code uh, is not law until it's until it, that one. You're talking about, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, construction of, the construction of code about the positive. Yeah, yeah, positive law. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That one, that one's pretty fucked. Uh, usually you show people that uh, you can kill an accountant with that one. Right. You, could, you could kill them dead, like shoot them in the fucking head with a 50 cal. Yep. You can kill an accountant dead showing them 26 USC 7806. Dead. Yep. And that's what I told him. And, and and that's the one he wouldn't look up. He was, he was yeah. like, I was like, well, let's look it up real quick. And he's like, yeah. Nah. And I'm like, all right. Then I told him, I was like, well, go home and type in one stupid <laughs> And I, I swear to you, I told him, I swear to you, I did. Well, because I, I love that shit. He started talking to me and I was telling him about the straw man. He had no clue about that. He had you know, no clue about the all caps name. And then I started using uh, terminology just like, well, then so I would be the agent on behalf of the principal. And the, the his his uh, assistant, her head just went whoop home and snapped over. And she was like, what the shit? And now they're both paying attention to what I'm saying. And I was just bringing up stuff. And again, I, I didn't really know shit other than I was repeating what you had said and I learned what you had said. So, uh, and I told him, I was like, dude, I don't know half the shit I need to know, but I know what I'm saying is true. And you can go look it up further. 
And, yeah, people, uh, you have to be very careful. Uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned from what would be considered the enemy is that you you use words that have an emotional reaction towards the intention of what you're trying to get done. Like the word sovereign, uh, the word uh, uh, straw man, the, these terms have more of a negative connotation and it usually shuts people off, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you say the word principal, you say the word agent, you say the words securities, these are things that usually uh, taxation, not paying taxes, uh, uh, non-taxpayer, these things are usually more positively looked at, right? I try to stay away from things like like straw man. I try to stay away from things like sovereign. Uh, I would rather use the word king, which is still, uh, you know, non-resident alien is is better because non-resident alien doesn't really, they don't really have a connotation with that, an emotional reaction toward that word. It's kind of more of like, a, what the hell is that kind of a deal? Yeah. Uh, when you when you start to when you start to you know again this is it's spelling like we talked about last time right mm -hmm. so 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 if you use a lot of terms that that have a tendency to turn people off you're making your own job more difficult yep straw man is is i think you could probably go through every single video and every single thing i've ever done and you maybe have heard me use the word maybe once if right. that yeah very little and i think i don't know that i actually use that word i just said that now i think what i told him was that you're actually i said we're a corporation i said that that all caps name is a corporation and i said it's actually Public a franchise it's a, i said it's a trust it's a franchise it's a corporation it's a bond i said it's it's a bunch of different things and this was again when i was just learning about all this so i i, I told him i was like i really don't know that much dude i i know enough to yeah. say that you should go look into this because you've you've over overlooked it in all your studies that's what i told him i was like you should you should be telling me this stuff and you should know this shit and then it, it, you'd be making more money i was like so what i told him i was like you'd be making more money if you knew this shit dude oh god stupid amounts of money i mean every lawyer i've talked to uh, they came out of their all their schooling and they didn't know how to file a motion. No joke. Right. All of them. Yeah. All of them. No joke. Now, now, in all honesty, I don't know how to file a motion yet. Now, now, I have been very slow, and I'm going to put it on my website when I launched the law law group. Mm -hmm. You'd think to yourself, well, "What's a law group? They can't litigate." Fine, but the thing is, is that you can do a million things, a billion different things. Yeah, that are all super consul effective consultant without having to get into litigation, 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 right? I mean, just, 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 just corporate tax structure is, is monstrous. You don't need to litigate at all to, to set up a corporate tax structure, to set up trust, to do, to do flow lines, uh, financial analysis, uh, 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 get out of paying taxes, get out of, uh, uh, legal issues. You don't, you don't need to, you can be in a massive litigation, and and you don't necessarily need to be a master at litigation to get out of litigation. Okay, so right. so so I have been slow to learn litigation explicitly, but but I am I am pretty much like at the point in my life where I've gone down all these different roads, and they've all gone up to litigation, and then I was like, eh, I want to wait on that for a little bit. Uh, and, and now in my life, it's getting to the point where pretty much every single road has been fully exhausted up to the point of where it's like, okay, Brandon, it, it's, it's time, it's time to, you know, so I went down to, uh, the Stanley mosque, uh, superior courthouse the other day. And, and, you know, it, I'm no different than anybody else, bro. Like people think I'm like a fucking magician. Okay. Like I'm nervous about this. I'm confused. I'm lost. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, fuck, like, I don't want to like learn this. This seems like so fucking crazy and complicated. So what I did, and you're going to laugh because so many people I've told this to and they'd fucking laugh their ass off. I dressed up in, in one of my custom suits. I have a whole bunch of custom suits. I lived in New York for a long time, fell in love with the fashion there. But, but I, I combined, I sort of made my own fashion. So what I did is I took, I took LA style, which is like very thin, very close, very tight and then and then the cufflinks are kind of shortened and it shows off the it shows off your 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 accessories a lot uh and then the the pant leg is usually shortened quite quite a bit uh, and it shows off your sock and it's it's yeah. it's a it's a there's a certain very very subtle flair to custom suits in new york city now now in new york city there is no color allowed uh maybe a teeny bit 
but but color is 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 not really very allowed. And if you're not wearing a fucking tie, you're a fucking chump, and you need to get get the get the fuck out of here. Okay, wow. that's New York. That's New York. You wear a tie. <laughs> Considered uh, edgy is like some of the guys wear the very thin long ties. Yeah. Uh, that's considered kind of edgy in New York. Uh, it's it's very old money. It's very old business. These guys don't. Uh, uh, if you're not if you're not willing to dress in that way, and you're not willing to to show up like that and show up on fucking time, you're instantaneously thrown to the goddamn curb. Okay, wow. so if you if wow. you're going to show up without a tie in New York City, if you think you're going to show up. Uh, uh, looking sloppy with some fucking sloppy ass 1950s looking fucking suit that they're, they're going to walk in, uh, look at you, turn around, not say a fucking word, walk right out and then have security escort you out of the building. That that's sort of, that's sort of New York city. Right. Yeah. So I took that and I brought it back in California. If you dress like that, you're, you're trying too hard. Right. It's like, sure. it's like breathing down a woman's neck when you're trying to date her. It turns people off in, in LA. Right. So what I did is I removed the tie. I did a I did an oriental style uh uh collar which is a very very small collar like how the fucking martial artists have it you can get yeah, those right, sure. you can get those those custom made and then you can get the 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 collars a different color so I'll do like a like a blue striped shirt with like a pink oriental collar okay. and then I do the and then I do the suit jacket <laughs> and then I do it open like two buttons down Right. So fully open like this. And then I do a, a, a handkerchief that matches the color of the oriental. So it's it's blue, pink oriental collar with a pink uh, handkerchief. And then I'll do like a little pin that has like a diamond in it or something like that. I'll do rings. And then I do a wooden watch, full wood. Right. Really? Wow. Wooden watch. Cool. And then I do and then I do uh, the short. Uh, it's It's tight, but shortened pant leg and then i do like crazy fucking socks bro crazy socks that match the the handkerchief and match the the collar so pink as fuck bright mm. as fuck and then i do like a, a hand woven leather shoes like like loafers damn that's that's pretty cool <laughs> and then i do a and then i do a a, a leather uh a, a fold over double clasp uh a messenger bag with a handle and then it, it also has the the shoulder strap that comes down and hangs down but i let that hang down and i hold the the leather bag by the handle and i i rolled in there like in my head like i'm fucking nervous as fuck holy fuck but i'm gonna look like a lawyer and i'm gonna act like a lawyer and i'm gonna roll up in there and see what happens right so i just went into the stanley mosque and i i just went to the first floor and then I walked to the edge of the, and I was like, so I, I didn't sleep. I was so nervous. It, you know, I'm not, people think I'm the toughest guy in the world. I'm not. Okay. It's just, it's just that, you know, through, through tremendous amounts of studying and tremendous amounts of activity, I, I become confident in certain areas, just like anybody else. Yep. You, you, you have these guys, you know, driving motorcycles way faster than I do. Cause they've been doing it for 10,000 hours. Okay. Uh, so, so, so. I go to the first floor, I go to the escalator, go up to the second floor, I'll walk all the way across, and then they have escalators on both sides. So I walk all the way across, I go up the escalators over here, all the way across, go up the escalators over here, all the way across, up the escalators over here, all the way across. I did that about six floors up. It's a nine-floor building. And I was thinking my whole time, I was like, someone's going to fucking grab me and kick me out of here. Like, why the fuck are you walking around all different floors, blah, 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 blah right? <laughs> and I just... I was just kind of like everyone, like all the all the normal looking people uh, were looking at me like, damn, like this is like a fucking badass looking lawyer. And all the lawyers were looking at me like, yo, what's up, B? Like, good to see you, brother. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is, is that the 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 fashion sense in 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 an LA courthouse, from my experience during the one day when I was there, it's very conservative. So so you have the you have the typical lace up, uh, 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 brown shoes. With with your gray socks, with like maybe some little polka dots on it, with your with your dark gray or like slightly lighter dark gray uh, pant leg that goes down all the way to the ankle, and then you have the 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 standard looking belt, nothing extravagant. I had a fucking big ass Gucci belt with a fucking monster monster fucking belt buckle like this, right? Nice. 
nothing like that. Uh, uh, very, very common pink shirt with a larger collar that comes down like this, uh, with a, with a tie, always a tie. Mm-hmm. And then, it, and then the, the, the matching kind of darkish gray, uh, and then, and then clean shaven. And then, you know, it's, it's very like, um, uh, um, how would I call it? Uh, uh, watered down, very, very, uh, sterile, very, it's not, I wouldn't go so far as to say sterile because there, there was like a little bit of color. I saw a couple of guys with like kind of like dark pink, like ties and stuff. You but did it say was, polka dots on the socks too. So I yeah, a little that. bit. It wasn't like crazy big polka dots. It was like little teeny ones. Uh, yeah. but, but it's definitely a very like, like, yo, cool it. Don't be a fucking wild man kind of atmosphere <laughs> and i rolled up in there like r- like like gucci belt fucking monster gucci belt better call uh, Saul. yeah you rolled up in yeah. there better call Saul down now let me ask you do you yeah. shave off the the stubble you got here that, that no. little bit you go no. in just like that i look like a fucking 12 year old when i shave i never shave you'll probably never see me clean shaven i, I won't I, oh i do i've already you've got a picture up somewhere where is that that one where you got hair and shit and is that in that like Probably Facebook You're, from like ten years ago. Yeah, I don't right, do that totally. shit anymore, bro. Yeah, I saw. I, I was like a fucking. It was on your Instagram or something. I wouldn't know. I w- I wasn't digging for it or anything, but I swear I saw it and I'm like, holy shit, that's old school. And uh, yeah, you were clean shaven in that one. Yeah, I've been clean shaven for ten years. So, um, me too. <laughs> fuck that, bro. Yeah. I mean, look, when I'm like sixty, I'm gonna clean shave and look like I'm like forty two. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. right. Exactly. You know what I mean, exactly. So it's my it's my back. It's my insurance plan for 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 it's my it's my social security account. Shaving my face is my social security. Account. Yep. Yep. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm trading on my looks now. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 for me, it was like, OK, I'm not going to like file papers. I'm not going to let again. I'm just going to roll up in there in a suit and walk around. And I might do that again. I might do that 10 times. Right. I was talking. I filed some name ch- name change paperwork because I'm changing my name legally from the all caps name to a different type of capitalization, which is hilarious. They're like, I've never seen anything like this. I'm like, I know, but I mean, I'm paying for it. So they're like, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, it has to do with all the stuff that I teach and all this kind of stuff, and it's kind of something I haven't talked about too much. Um, but I rolled up in there and I filed my name change paperwork and. Um, uh, walked around and then I came back and then I walked around and then I have court date set for October. Hmm. So for the name change. So, so I'm just kind of like dipping my toe in. I'm starting to connect myself with some people. There are some lawyers that are involved in what I'm doing. Hmm. I've contacted them. Uh, I've been my, one of my jobs just got a, a lawsuit in the mail and I like grabbed it and like sneaked off with it and like made copies of it. Cause I like wanted to read it a bunch of times and, and, so, so there's like, you know, I'm walking down the street. I see like a fucking eviction notice. I'm like, oh shit, I, I fucking stop. And I, I, I go up to it and I'm like reading all the papers and taking photos. And so, so I'm, I'm sort of, I'm sort of immersing myself in that world right now. Um, cool. So, so just like everything else, uh, people think that I'm, I'm, I'm fucking Buck Rogers and I'm, and I'm going 40 trillion miles an hour shooting at everything at the hip. I'm really not. Uh, I, I, I tend to go a lot slower. Someone like, like fucking, uh, Joe Lustica that I've done a lot of shows with very, very good personal friend of mine. He, he shoots at the hip in 10 seconds and he's got a great rumble channel and he's just like, he learns about something, bro. He's failing half of David's in 24 hours. Wow. He's fucking crazy. I mean, he's, he's, he's the fastest gun in the West or in the East. He's in the East. So, so, so I don't pretend to be the fastest gun in the West. Uh, I'm not, I, I am the, I am the the slowest, most focused gun in the West, probably, and and I and I take my time and I try to clear up all the definitions of the words and understand it as best I can. But when I feel confident and ready to move forward, uh, yes, I, I generally take action, and then and then after I've taken a little bit of action, I usually have success, and then I and then I usually go very quickly from that point. So, um, I think within the next handful of months. Uh, I'll have learned a lot of the litigation side of things and gotten rolling and started and, and, and made some relationships and filed some documentation. I need to take, uh, I, I am, I am at the point now where I have no other options. I need to take MX to court, uh, to get this infinite money situation straightened out, get my, uh, my accounts reopened. Um, 
I've already sent the mailings as per uh, Monza's teachings, the one, two, three mailings, which you're going to learn about if you haven't seen it yet. You'll learn about that probably tomorrow. Um, cool. So one, two, three notice, first notice, second notice, third notice, final notice. Oh, I've he said something about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 mentioned it, and I'm I'm really good at extrapolating, but I never would have come up with anything beyond that. But I've heard him talk about the one, two, three, and then he's like, he's like, hey, you, you just gotta, send the same shit. You, you got to be able to follow through. The, his, his whole well, thing listen, is you got to be able to follow through. Well, you 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 send you send some. Let's say they don't get it. Let's say they lose it. Let's say they get busy. It's like human nature, bro. I mean, honestly, a lot of law. I mean, the cool thing about law, this is this is old shit, bro. I mean, this is like you're studying, you're studying like an like like not just a previous lifetime. You're studying like previous worlds, man. This is like history on fucking crystal meth. Uh, you, you know, so 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 you send you send a mailing, you know, they get busy, they lose it, it gets lost in the mail, someone rolls it up and uses it to smoke crack. Hmm. And then you send a second one. You're like, all right, things happen. People have families and people are busy and 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 all this kind. Of, you send a second one, right? And then you send a third one. And then the third one in law is sort of like, all right, like guys, <laughs> you you you've gotten one, you've gotten another one, and it's like, okay, by the third, it's sort of like a three strikes you're out kind of a system that's like kind of, you know, and 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 you hear a lot of talk about this in the movement just in general, but, but do I know the exact specific source material that talks about the one, two, three rule and exactly how it works and exactly why it works that way? No, I believe there is probably something like that out there that you could probably find if you want to. I, I, I don't really, I've never looked for that because I just kind of look at it as it's just human nature. You wouldn't, you wouldn't write to grandma and say, you know, grandma, fuck you like really right away. Right. You'd be like, or like best friend, you know, best friend. Hey, are we going to this uh, thing on Saturday? You message him on Monday, right? You get no response. And then Tuesday you're like, Hey, yo, are we going to this thing on, 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 on Saturday or not? No response, you know? And then by Wednesday you're like, yo, bitch, what the fuck? You're not responding to me. I need to know if we're going to this thing on fucking Saturday. You need to fucking respond to me because I'm trying to make fucking plans with you, you fucking dumbass. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you. Respond to me now or I'm not going. You know, it's 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 sort of like it's sort of like it's just human nature, I think. Uh you know, I, I it's just human nature. Yeah, it's you, an know, ultimatum you don't, you don't, a, you don't freak sorts. out if, if someone if someone asked me something one time and they totally totally freak out. It's like, dude, you're fucking insane. Okay, <laughs> if if they if they if they message me once and then they f totally freak out on the second message, I'm still kind of like, yo, you're kind of fucking crazy. Fuck you. But if they message you once and then they wait a few days, they message you twice. And then they wait a few days and then they message you a third time and they kind of freak out on you on the third time. You're sort of like, oh yeah, fuck. Like I, I didn't respond to your, your original two messages that you sent me. I apologize. Here's the situation, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's like, you know, a lot of, a lot of law, especially old school law, real shit, real law, you know, it's, it's very humanizing actually. Um, there's still a lot of paper used. There's still a lot of handwritten things used. It's like, it, it's very slow to go electronic. You know, it's like the three, the three steps rule. It's, it's, you know, there's a lot of, actually a lot of humanity in the law system, you know, um, in an old school way, I could kind of see that how I, I, you know, it seems like unless everybody was in on to like the idea of just enslaving us with the law, which I don't think is probably the case then it seems like the idea of it would have been to protect humanity, you know? So it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a clarification and codification of the settling of disputes. Okay. If someone said, if someone said, what is law, whether it's common law, whether it's statute, whether it's, you know, even on my website for the, the Williams and Williams, I'm doing, uh, you know, a, a question and answer section. Mm. And it's going to say, are you an officer of the court? Uh, you know, no, absolutely not. And, and I will never be, but I am a foreign friend of the court. 
I'm not going to roll up on the court and, and, and start fucking pointing fingers and cursing people out and doing all it's like, no, 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 no. Like yeah. I'm, I'm a foreign friend of the court. I'm paying the court for service and I'm going to be highly respectful towards that court unless that court has, you know, let, let's say I'm, you know, and, and it's easy for me to say all this. I've never really spent a lot of time in court, uh, barely anything. So it's easy for me to talk, sit here and talk out my ass. But I, I think in my head, uh, how would I handle it? You know what I mean? It's like, if, if the court case starts to go off the rails real bad, it's like, yo, like I have a responsibility toward this shit. And to be honest with you, myself and, and most other people don't have a problem with what's written when they, when they say that a motor vehicle as per 18 USC 31 is defined as a commercial automobile that's used, uh, uh, uh for commercial purposes, uh, on the highways, Bro, like no one, no one has a disagreement with that. The the, the disagreement and and the upset and the anger and the frustration is the fact that we were never told that, and we've all gone to the DMV and we were never told what the contract is to get a driver's license and get plates and get a registration. We were never told that registration is the uh, the motor vehicle uh, theft prevention program, which is found in uh, fucking like thirty one. USC 12611 or something 34 USC 12611 you want to get fucking pissed off I don't know why I got so fucking pissed this pisses people off and for some reason this this is like one of the most rage inducing fucking things that that I've ever found I was so fucking angry when I found this and I was like god damn like I've never been this fucking angry the definition of registration tags comes from 34 USC 12611 and it's weird because it's not, it's usually almost always a four digit section, but this one's a five digit section. Right? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Motor vehicle theft prevention program. Um, so, so we can get into this if you want to, this is fucking crazy as yeah. fuck. Let Let's me do. share my screen on this. Oh, Thank it's you. uh, you've disabled uh, screen oh. sharing. Oh, I just know uh, uh, the last show, the last show that we did, I was like screen shared the whole time. And like the boxes of us were like real tiny. So I'm going to like go back and forth this time. I'm going to like screen share and then I'm going to like turn it off and then I'm going to like screen share and turn it off. I'm going to go like back and forth. That's cool. And uh, you should be able to now. So we didn't get into cars last time. Um, Cars is. First off, it's one of the most complicated areas. And second off, it's one of the most enraging areas, which is hilarious. Uh. So we're, we're going to start off with the definition of a uh, motor vehicle. Now you go to the, the, the DMV or the BMV MV stands for motor vehicle. Okay. So if you go to 18 USC 31, then you go down to subsection. What is this? A definitions like always uh, uh, a six definition of motor vehicle. The term motor vehicle means every description of carriage or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways in transportation of passengers, passengers and property or property or cargo. Now, if you scroll down now, this gets even fucking wilder, bro, because look, you can see here, there's a, there, this is a clickable definition. Right now, I already know what this definition is. It's in the same subsection. So we're just going to scroll down to subsection A10, and you're going to see they've gone so far as to even subdivide the definition of the term used for commercial purposes from the definition from A6. Wow. So we're going to we're going to clear that up now. It says here the term used for commercial purposes means the carriage of persons or property for any fair fee rate charge or other consideration or directly or indirectly in connection with any business or other undertaking intended for profit. Now, look, nobody has a fucking problem with this, bro, because you know, the only people that, that, that should be going to the DMV as per these definitions, the driver Show first chauffeurs. Right. Hey, well, like Lyft and, and Uber, right? Lyft, Uber, taxis, Lyft, Uber, taxis. What about CDLs? Nope. Don't need them. Really? Don't need them. I'll show you why. If you go to, uh, uh, and I have a lot of truck drivers, a lot, a shit load. Like if I had to say like one of the, the most 
highest demographics that I communicate with on a regular basis, honestly, it'd probably be truck drivers for, for multiple reasons. First off, they're usually very conservative. Second off, they fucking love America. Mm-hmm. Third off, uh, they're, they're, they, 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 they have a lot of time on the road to listen to various things. They're sort of like, in, in a way they're sort of retired because they, they have the time to listen to whatever they want. I mean, if they wanted to spend 10 hours a day listening to a podcast like this, they have, they have the, the access to do that. They drive a fucking big rig, right? Yep. Yep. Plus, you know, the other thing about, about the, the demographic of truck driver that's really interesting is they're openly trying to be made extinct by electronic automatic driving semis. Yep. And they know it. They, they know that their time is running out, uh, you know, and they, they're not they, they don't like it because they feel uh, correctly. They feel that 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 their demographic is is important and their demographic is a is an integral part of America. It's an integral a, a part of the American dream, which it is. And and replacing truck drivers with automatic computers uh, is is sad and, and depressing. Um, yep. And I understand it from a, a purely commercial sense, I suppose. Uh, it removes all of the legal and, and, and liability related everything. I mean, you can't crash into somebody as a computer. Uh, if you do, there's no one to really blame. And if you remove the human element, no one can fall asleep at the wheel or I don't know what it's probably all sorts of whatever, you know, pro, pro and con t- type of, I guess, but I, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with it, but I can, I can try to put myself in their shoes and kind of think with, with what they're thinking. Right. But sure. So uh, uh, if you go to the, the, another tab here and you go to uh, what is the 15 departments of uh, government, there's 15 departments. Okay. Um, Is that federal government or just. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. The, the big one. Yeah. Um, the government of the United States, uh, District of Columbia. Okay. Gotcha. So if you go down the 15 different departments, which you can find here, um, you know, you've got, you got a lot of interesting ones and I've studied all of these a little bit, at least uh, trying to figure out what they all do. Department of state, department of the treasury, department of defense, department of justice, department of the interior, uh, department of agriculture, department of commerce, department of labor, department of health and human services. Uh, this is the one where your birth certificates go. This is the one that creates your public corporation <laughs> that is used as an agency <laughs> in the administration of civil government. Uh, you have the Department of Housing and Urban Development, Department of Transportation now, uh, Department of Energy, and, and so on. The Department of Transportation is the big boy, the big boy. The Department of Motor Vehicles is a subsection inside of the larger department, which is the Department of Transportation. This one does everything. Planes, trains, automobiles. Okay. This is everything under the sun, moon, and stars. Uh, now, within the, the, the big boy senior sector, which is the Department of Transportation, you have the term motor carrier, which is a completely different term than motor vehicle. There are two types of motor carriers. There is a four hyphen higher motor carrier. What is the definition of this might not be exactly what we're looking for, right? Okay, this is pretty good. Uh, what is the definition of an authorized for higher carrier? A person or company that provides transportation of cargo or passengers for compensation. If you are a for hire carrier, in addition to the US uh, number, US DOT number, United States Department of Transportation number, you will also need to obtain an operating authority MC number. Okay. Now, the other option that you have at the DOT level is a private <coughs> motor carrier. So no one knows about this, and I don't really think that anyone really wants you to know about this. This is mm-hmm. um, this is interesting. I, I don't think I've seen this before. Uh, 
this is a definition from 49 USC 13102 subsection 15 motor motor private carrier. This is a little bit different. The term motor private carrier means a person other than a motor carrier transporting property by motor vehicle, which is a little bit confusing. When A, the transportation is as provided in B, B, the person is the owner, leasee, or bailee of the property being transferred. And C, the property is being transported for sale, lease, rent, or bailment, or to further a commercial enterprise. So a little bit complicated. Uh, I'm going to try to find, there's another one that's very, very simple definition of, here we go. This might be better. Um Private motor carrier means a person who provides transportation of property or passengers by commercial motor vehicle and is not a for hire motor carrier. Not that great. Not that great. Uh, let's see what we got here. Private carrier. Uh, this is good. This is better. Private carrier refers to a company that owns the vehicles used to transport its own goods. A private carrier does not transport goods as its primary business and thus does not seek to transport the goods of other companies like a common carrier does. In this sense, a private carrier is not a for hire carrier and does not carry the goods of other companies as its primary business, right? Now, now in, in a semi-truck, okay, for example, I'm going to stop sharing now. So, so for example, um, let's see here. How do I, uh, where is it? What the hell? I think if you go all the way down to the bottom, maybe. Oh, your shit's on the right side, maybe. No, no, it's not. Hmm. Hold on a second. This is being weird. What the hell? Give me one second here. Uh, stop share. Oh, there we go. Great. That works. Perfect. So, um, so you, you know, I have a lot of truck drivers that hit me up and I love me some truck drivers, bro. These guys are fucking America from head to toe, bro. Head cool. to toe, okay? I love me some truck drivers, okay? Uh, I'm from Indiana. I know a lot of fucking truck drivers. It's one of the, it's one of my f- my favorite demographics. I don't talk about it a lot, uh, but I, 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 I love me some fucking truck drivers, okay? Now, it's really, 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 really fucking simple. I have a landscaping company. In the contracts, which are very simple, I don't do these fucking ninety-page contracts. Nobody wants to read that shit. Right? Maybe like like three kind of long-ish paragraphs for my whole contract. Part of it's a promise to pay. Obviously, I want my fucking security. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the parts of my um of my of my contracts is um the 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 client agrees that anything anything <clears throat> that is transported by us is owned by us during transportation. Mm-hmm. So let's say let's say they buy a fuckload of plants, which happens all the time. They buy a fuck ton of plants, plants everywhere. You know, uh uh you know, $4,000 in plants, right? Okay? During transport, so so we buy the plants, we own the plants. We transport the plants, we own the plants during transport. Once we park the goddamn truck, open up the back and take the plant off the truck and place it on the property, the moment that plant comes off the truck and it hits the property line, it is now owned by the client. Cool. When you do it that way, which is just a fucking sentence in the contract, it's so fucking easy. Right. You may need to change your insurance, obviously, right? Like, like you're you're not you're not transporting the client's property for compensation. Now you're transporting your own property and it needs to be insured as your own property during transportation, okay, which may require a slight insurance adjustment, right? Um now 
You don't need a CDL. You don't need a driver's license. You don't need a four hire motor carrier permit. And you don't need license plates from the Department of Motor Vehicles. And you don't need registration. You need fuck all. Nothing. Yeah. All you need is a private motor. You don't need it. Honestly, if you really want to take it all the way, you don't need it. But if you if you want to play the game a little bit and, and prevent yourself from getting absolutely fucking accosted by police right. in this fucked up, dumbass world we live in, mm -hmm. you can get a completely free private motor carrier number. All the numbers on all my shit, everything, except my landscaping company because I... I've just been lazy and I haven't taken the time to really do this with the landscaping company yet, but I, I, I need to, um, you, 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 you have your, I have, I have a whole stack of license plates like this, all types of different ones. And I mean, I don't, that was what I was going to ask you is where do you put on the license plate then? What, what you know, what, what well, and I, I'll I mean, I, here, here, here. I'll show you. I don't I don't typically like to show all this because it's got my DOT number on it, but you know, at this point, I really don't care. So here I'll show you. Okay, so, cool. So this is this is a brand new smoking off the fucking off the fucking press, hot, red hot, not even unwrapped yet. Yeah, I see that. License plates. And I've and I've gone through I've gone through so many different variations of license plates. Uh, I was I was gonna figure you probably had you've probably changed your shit up quite a bit as you learn more. You're gonna adjust your shit accordingly, right? You know, so many fucking variations, bro. And 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 the older ones are ew. like the one in the in the course that I have. That's like oh USC two forty two eighteen USC two forty one eighteen USC two forty two all that. You yeah. know, I hate to say it, I I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. Uh, now at this point where I'm at now, mm -hmm. it, it's it's kind of hostile. It's kind of combative, and it's not really, it's not really where we're at now. Um, right. You know, I'm not gonna go through and change all that shit. I, I kind of like people going through my entire historical research track, uh, and I like that most people who are going through that track tend to go through to the end. So I try to just clarify things as we go. And I think that's that's better because it kind of shows like the human side of all of this. I'm not trying to be perfect. Right. And I'm not trying to be a genius that no one else can, you know, it's just not the truth. It's just not the truth. It may seem as though it's the truth. Right. Um, but it's just simply not the truth, right? So if you go on my Nation of the Amnesty Coalition page, you'll see that there's Real a quick you update that regularly. Like regularly. No, I I I I like when you uh, come up with new shit, you put new shit on there. Well, it's very new. Usually when there's something very, very new, I, I cover it over and over. I, I, I'm, I'm a bit obsessive. I'm a bit obsessive. I, I, I read it over and 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 over. I mean, sometimes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And I might change a period or a comma or a couple of little words and then I'll update the version number of it. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, but at this point in time, as per what is this? Uh, August eighteenth, twenty twenty two. It's pretty fucking. It's pretty fucking done, bro. Like this. This is a cooked goose. Let me tell you. This is. Yeah. I mean, I don't think this is going to change a whole lot. So if anyone's waiting for me to to adjust this some more, I mean. Ooh, boy, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot more adjustments. But on that cool. same Nation of the Amnesty Coalition page, there is a link to buy license plates. Yeah. And I have an already pre-made license plate. Uh, all you do is just plug in your private motor carrier DOT number. Um, I personally consider the private motor carrier DOT number to be so easy to access that I have not even made a full video on it. I've made a, a couple of videos that partially describe the process, but do not walk a person through the whole process uh, live. I thought the process was really simple. Uh, I've had a few people reach out to me and tell me that it's not so simple. I will be offering that as one of my services. I think that's stupid. Uh, but if you want to pay me to get you a private motor carrier DOT number and print you off some plates, I will do that. Uh, again, I think that's really dumb, but I'm going to offer that as a service on my services page. Anyways, if you click on the, um, 
license plate link on the the nation of the amnesty coalition page you will be brought to a a a template that i have had one of my people make i did not make this te this template someone made it for me this website speedy signs they let you export a link of your of your template and then you click on the link oh. and then it takes you to the fucking template it's all done so sure. all you do is just plug in your 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 private motor carrier your dot number and then hit order and then it's done like it's literally that fucking easy so so i ordered these i spent all of the the extra things that you can buy the reflective coating the the this the the deeper colors the every single fucking box like three different boxes of like additional upgrade options right uh this <clears throat> plate i'm about ready to show you has every single upgrade you can possibly buy on there so it was like maybe 80 dollars per plate which is kind of expensive but it's fucking yeah. badass yeah these came out a lot better than i even thought and i had fairly high expectations for it so i'll go ahead and and stand up, and I'm going to show you guys this uh, close to the camera, okay? Oh, yeah, dude. That's bad to the bone. Ambassador at large. Non-commercial automobile. No expiration. Diplomat. The Amnesty Coalition, dude. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and you can see, you can see how well it reflects the light. Yeah, absolutely. Now the 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 normal diplomatic plates that come from the Department of State look just like this. The problem is is that they are uh, motor vehicle plates. They're commercial plates. That no one's talking about this. No one knows about this. So as part of my explanatory statement, it says on there that you know like we're non-commercial. So we're just going to basically print up our own shit that looks just like what you guys make for the commercial side. I say it right in the, in the, you know, and then I put in there, if it's a problem, let me know. And, and don't, don't, don't approve the passport until we can talk about this. If it's going to be a fucking problem. Now, as far as I can tell, the department of state symbol is, um, is, um, open. It's, it's open source. Anyone can use it. It's not a copyright, a special copyright on it. So mm -hmm. it's nothing illegal to use that as far as my research has gone. Cause I have looked into that. And then you think to yourself like, Oh, well you are, um, you are impersonating a diplomat, which is illegal and this and that. I look that up too. It's uh, it's 18 USC 915, 18 USC 915. Mm -hmm. So if you look at 18 USC 915, uh, which is basically uh, pretending to be a foreign diplomat or consul uh, illegally or incorrectly or falsely, it says here, whoever with intent to defraud Right. Within the United <laughs> States, falsely assumes or pretends to be a diplomatic consular or other official of a foreign government, duly accredited as such to the United States and acts as such or in such pretended character demands or obtains or attempts to obtain any money, paper, documents or anything of value shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both. So it's a pretty serious situation. But as we've already covered in the 18 USC 11, the definition of foreign government, you do not have to be officially recognized in order to be def defined as a foreign government. You simply have to be at peace. And then the definition of uh, 18 USC 915, which is the felony, you have to have the intent to defraud and it has to be within the territorial boundaries of the United States. That's what I was going to say, which is D.C. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, so 18 U.S.C. 915 does not apply to this situation at all. Um, and the thing is, is that you are putting your private motor carrier DOT number on there. Now, I would say that you do need to have a passport issued using the explanatory statement that I have on my website for the Amnesty Coalition. I wouldn't put these plates on your vehicle, on your automobile, or your. I have these on my motorcycle as well. It's a different look. It's it's even cooler looking on the motorcycle. I bet. Uh, yeah. I haven't even <laughs> put these on yet. I was going to ask, have you been pulled over or anything with them? What do you have no. on? What are you rocking right now then? So right now I'm rocking plates that look just like this. Um, this is a very, 
I bought so many different versions and different sizes and stuff. This is a very, very teeny, 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 tiny version of what I have on my car right now. Okay. No stickers. Florida Sunshine State. And so that's on your car in California. Yeah, the, it looks just like a Florida plate, but to be honest with you, the 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 state and the orange in the background on my on my on my car plate, it looks kind of it, it looks a little bit ghetto slightly, and the, the the numbers don't shine through super well like the normal Florida license plates, but it looks pretty close to a Florida license plate. I've never gotten even the slightest peep. I drive like 100 miles an hour on the carpool lane all day long, bro, by myself. Really? Not a peep. But not, not even peep. not even pulled over? No, nope, so not haven't a had, peep. You haven't had I've to had flex cops your behind me. I've had cops behind me. And and I just get out of the way because it seems like they're trying to go somewhere, and I just, nothing, bro. Not a thing. So those numbers on that plate, what do they lead to? Uh, a private uh, private motor carrier DOT number. Oh, oh, was that your was that I, was that the same number or was the plate that you showed just had different numbers than what's on your car? No, it's the same. Look, that's the same exact thing. Oh, dude, you're right. Okay, wow, I didn't even notice that. I just they were they were the 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 font freaked me out. Wow, that's the same shit. That's crazy, dude. Right on. <laughs> that's very cool. So you can put your private motor carrier DOT number on everything. You you just you just print up a whole fuck ton of plate. If you if you're if you're a billionaire and you've got seventy three cars, you just print off a. Uh, two per car, one for the front and one for the back. I don't know. In California, they require one in the front, one in the back. Some right. states don't. Yes, some don't. Yeah. Print off 140 of these, and you're good to go. Wow. You put them all on your your vehicle. Now that the private motor carrier DOT number is a little bit weird. Uh, when you when you first fill it out, they give you an inter an intra. I think it's an intra state, and then you have to actually go in and manually change the registration a second time to make it interstate kind of a weird little kind of a weird little thing wow yeah and then once you sign up for your private motor carrier dot number which is completely free you're going to get about 875,000 calls from all of these companies that pretend to be government organizations because they're trying to sell you something in relation to your DOT number. And it, it scares a lot of people. Oh, you have to get this and you have to get that. So, so I don't know what they do. I guess they sell your information to all of these companies and, and these companies all assume you have a four hire motor carrier and they have all these like laws as to what, four higher motor carriers have to have. And it's like a mess, bro. And like a private motor carrier doesn't have to have any of that shit. So when you, when you sign up for, and I'm going to offer this as a service, I don't, I don't see why anyone would ever pay me for this service, but I'm going to offer it as a service because people have asked me for it. Um, but, but I will, I will set up the whole thing. I will, um, Probably create a a burner number. I use a a, a burn the burner app, which is an app on your cell phone. You can type in burner, and you can buy burner numbers for like two bucks. And you can click one button, and it'll burn the number forever. It's literally like a burner phone on your cell phone. Oh wow! It's like some fucking like it's like some fucking like drug dealer fucking like high class criminal shit bro burner is an app right for three bucks you can buy a number and then as soon as you want to get rid of that number you hit like two buttons and it it burns the number forever off the face of the earth wow okay. and you can have as many numbers as you want so i might get like burner numbers and then i might like um uh, link the private motor carrier number to the burner number. And then that way the, the client that I have doesn't, ha doesn't get 1400 phone calls. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm debating on how to make this as painless as possible. And then I'll go in and file a paperwork and then I'll go in and make all the adjustments to make the, the intrastate registration, an interstate 
restoration. Uh, so, so registration. in other words, when you sign up to try to, to do this DOT number, which, I'll, you know, whatever, I'm going to look into it and try to figure it out, then they're going to say, okay, sure, here. And they're going to, what, send me uh, something in the mail that says, here's your intrastate number, and I got to no. go in person to do it's, it? It's actually hilarious. Hilarious. They don't tell you how to do it. And there's no information to the point where the computer system, like, doesn't even... So what it does is that you, you click through the different the different pages and you get to the very end and it's it'll it says thank you very much you have submitted your application for a a, a motor carrier number please give us uh, up to four weeks to process your motor carrier number and then right below that it says uh, your private motor carrier number has been approved and is number blank 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 <laughs> like. Like the, the computer system is literally like not even really even set up to even offer these things. They don't explain how to get them. Wow. It's a complete, it's a completely secret. It's like ordering off of uh, uh, the uh, in and out secret yeah, menu. There you go. There you go. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's, like it's, it's like off. It's like ordering when you, when you start, when you start the process, and you go through like two or three pages. If you get the if you get the right processes and you click the right things, it comes up the whole fucking screen, bro. And it says, it seems like what you're trying to get right now is a private motor carrier non-commercial DOT number. Is that correct? Bro, like when I saw that screen, I was like, <laughs> holy shit, bro. It's, it's finding the secret holy room in Zelda. Holy shit, bro. I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me, bro. I was like, bro, I had an erection. I had yeah. like a... I can I imagine like a Viagra snorting erection, bro. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. And um, because like I've studied this so much that like going through the different screens, I was like, oh yeah, no problem. Boom, boom. It's gotta be this one, it's gotta be this. I, I just knew like instinctually, right? Because I've studied what commerce is and and all the different definitions and all so every single screen, I'm like, oh, it's gotta be this one, it's gotta be the sub subsection of this one, it's gotta be this one, subsection of this one, but boom, 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 boom. Like I already knew, right? I think I went through it once and then I backed up, and then I went through it again, and then I backed up, and then I went through it again, and then I had it like all within a few minutes. Wow. And um nice. <laughs> and um so so the private motor carrier DOT number is um free. And when I say free, I mean, they don't even ask you for a credit card. The, the, you get the number. It says we need time to process this. And then in, just below that, the next paragraph is here's your number. We've already, it's, it's all, it's a weird, it's, it's weird. It's like, they haven't even really like totally programmed it properly. So, it but that is you, legit then that is your actual there is number. No, there is no approval process A for care, oh. a for hire motor carrier. Oh, right. There sure. is an approval process. A yeah. private motor carrier DOT number, there is no approval process. If you go through the prompts and you fill it out properly, you are approved instantaneously, always 100% of the time. They'll give you the number on the spot live, and then you can log in to your new account live instantaneously. You have to log into the account, and you have to go in there and adjust a few things because uh, you can't do it in the actual original application. They make sure. it even, there's a second layer of the maze. Yeah. So when you log into the private motor carrier DOT number with your login, you're going to change, you're going to go to registration update, something like that. Right. And then you're going to go through, there's a bunch of different things that you can change and, and, and you can do that were never on the original registration. One of them is to change it from an intrastate to an interstate. You can't do that on the original application. You have to do it after the fact in the login. Hmm. Now, the cool thing about the private motor carrier DOT number is that you, you have to update the private motor carrier DOT number every two years to keep it alive, to keep it active. Hmm. As long as you update it every two years minimum, it's completely free forever. And you need one number for all of your non-commercial vehicles. Oh, same number ac across the board. My motorcycle and my car have the exact same number on it. Cool. Two years, huh? Okay. So what do you do when you update it? You just go in there and you don't bro, have to change anything. I'm telling you, bro, bro, I'm telling you, you could have lost your password to do a password reset to go in and update your registration and be done and, and to re reset the clock on the two years. Bro. Yeah. Th three minutes.
right three fucking minutes bro just three like set a reminder minutes, on your bro. phone so you don't forget to do it and then just be like i'm assuming done. i'm assuming they send you an email or something actually i, oh, I, I could be i could be wrong better. on that yeah. i could be wrong on that but yeah it might be good to set a little alarm put something on your on your records but um your 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 private motor carrier dot number operates off of an ein number business or trust it does not operate off of your social security number Right. They also do not uh, require a permanent address, which I have a feeling that'll probably change at some point because they like to fucking add that into shit to freak people out and to fucking confuse people and trap people. Mm -hmm. uh, you you do need an EIN number and some kind of a business related something in order to. So what I did is I t I, I created a trust of my name in all capital letters, Brandon Joe Williams Trust. And then I got an EIN number for that trust, which is all very easy. Now, these are all things I'm going to offer as services. I haven't talked too much about the building of trusts and the getting of EIN numbers. I've talked a little bit about it. It's not the simplest thing in the world. It's kind of like a whole lifestyle. Uh, I am going to be offering that. That's a unique service that I will be offering that that is not the easiest thing in the world to sort out on your own. And it makes more sense to actually offer that as a service. Um, Cause there's going to be like a whole kind of like micro training program associated with that as well. Hmm. So um, in, in what, in regards to what, how, how you function in, in the financial world? Uh, in, in general, in general, like you're the trustee, you have to understand the trustee beneficiary relationship. You have to understand the way that the assets uh, operate inside the trust. You have to understand the, the, the way that a trust sits in the legal world and relationship to the incorporated world. It's actually a, a totally external to the incorporated world. You have to understand how to sign your name using a trustee signature uh, you have to understand kind of like what, what your basic duties are as a trustee. What are your basic duties as the beneficiary? What is a fiduciary responsibility? Uh, I'll probably do advanced course videos on all of this at some point. I, I haven't done it because it's been, it's been sort of a learning process for me as well. Again, like, you know, this is not a, a completed project by any oh, means. Yeah, this is sure. all in the works, right? So I can only do as much as I can, as fast as I can. I do not like releasing uh, information in bits or pieces or unknowns or partials. I like to wrap up at least sections of of this information and this research. Yeah. Um, so um, that's going to be a service I'll be offering uh, along with the EINs along with the private motor carrier DOT numbers, along with the passports, along with this, along with that, I'll get the, I'll, I'll be offering litigation services probably within a handful of months. I mean, it depends on if I want to work anymore after we crack infinite money. Cause at that point, I don't even know, like maybe I'll work a little bit here and there just to, just to keep myself on my toes, or maybe just as like a learning experience, right. just to keep myself moving in, in, in an educational aspect. Uh, I don't know yet. This is, you know, this is like, I mean, how many people have ever asked you, like, would you be working if you had infinite money? Yeah. Oh, I I mean, see, and I already know the answer to that. I absolutely would, but I would be doing different shit, man. You know what That's I mean? That's what I mean. That's like, what I'd I mean. be doing different shit because I'd be like, oh, well, if money doesn't matter. And I, I believe that's coming anyway. What I mean one way or another, and they're going to separate it out. I think it's going to be like the people that figure out how to live without, I don't know, having to have whatever the, the digital currency that they're probably going to force us into. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I, I don't think it's going to be that hard to figure out. I think in it, you know, the way they'll sell it to you is like, you're either with us or you're screwed. I don't think it's going to be quite that bad. And all this shit that we're figuring out and people are having their own, like there's a thousand ways to do a lot of this shit. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. and so people are starting to go, Oh, so in other words, wait, this isn't some great big monster that I need to be afraid of shit. No, dude, we own this shit. And when you start realizing that, and then, like you said, man, really learning the shit out of it first before you start just firing off. You know, you said some people do it that way. I was kind of feeling that way. And then the more I started learning, the more I went, okay, well, before I start pulling a whole bunch of triggers, let's learn a shitload first. And you just, you empower yourself when you learn. That's what I've found. And, and yeah, especially and learning from you, man. I love how you do it. You 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 bounce around and you 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 come a lot like how I do it. You, you know, you get to want to really fucking learn something too, before you start talking about it, you know? 
Yeah, I don't like talking about things very much uh, unless I've really focused on it. You know, at least know the definition of the words minimum. You know what right, I mean? Right. But the 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 thing is, is that um, um, I don't. You know, there's a lot of people who like to to pull out their 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 six shooter and start shooting at the hip within ten seconds. Um, you know, frankly, there. there it, there's there's even those people are they're not getting in trouble they're not necessarily having success but they're not getting in trouble either so i'm kind of like at this point like okay so for the longest time my website my my seat national theory page up until about maybe three or four months ago it had this big fucking section at the top and it said like don't fucking do any of this if you don't spend 500 plus fucking hours you know this is not for the fucking faint of heart uh, uh, if you're not going to spend 500 or a thousand hours, just fucking study. This as a passing curiosa and just move on with your fucking life. Don't bother. Don't fuck with this. This is not for fucking dilettantes. Not for fucking, you know, this is not a fucking game mm-hmm. over the past year and a half. I, I decided to change that. I took that whole thing down and I changed it to, you know, if you go on my, if you go on my state national resources, I mean, I can show, I can literally probably fucking show you this shit. Let's yeah. do a screen share. Yep. If I go to uh, 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 Time Machine website, Wayback Machine, right? Mm-hmm. If you've never seen it, it's pretty fucking cool, man. I uh, actually never have. I've heard about it, but I've never actually, I've never done this. So this is pretty cool. You can go way back to like some cool ass websites from the 90s, bro. I've done so many cool websites. Oh, from the dude, 90s. that's that's awesome! So it'll uh, that's really cool. <laughs> you can go, you can go like the 1994 or some shit, bro, on this thing. It's a like crazy. Wow, crazy, right? Okay, 94, man. That's when I graduated high school. <laughs> oh no, shit! Yeah, I graduated high school in in 04. Holy shit! Okay, yeah, 10 years. That's right. I remember you saying that. I, I remember that. So let's go to a, a snapshot of my website from December 15th, 2022. I believe at that time. I still had the old um, admonishment at the top of my state national three page. Let's see. So you can see here the nation of the amnesty coalitions, not even here. Yeah, I see that. Wow. Yeah. Um, so let's go to public notice. Um and and for the for people who 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 are new to this and and they've never seen anything like this, you know, this also proves the tremendous amount of work that's gone into this website. Just yeah. mind blowing amounts. You can go back to these and you'll see the website's completely rewritten over and over and over again. So look, look. That's what I was talking about earlier when I was like, dude, you update your shit. So if you do not put in the work to become educated and be patient, this is in all caps. Before taking action on any of this information, you are putting yourself at risk. I have read books and watched videos two to six hours per day, seven days per week for about six months, and I am just now starting to take action. I am also working with three mentors personally. This is not a joke and not something to do haphazardly. If you don't want to put in 500 plus hours into this and just enjoy it as a passing curiosa and move on with your life, don't bother. Anything on this post should be well-researched and done lawfully. There are lawful ways to apply every aspect of this post, but it is a process that may require some uh, work and time. Uh, this post uh, represents my individual position and, indi- and individual discoveries, ideas, et cetera. This post in no way represents any group, movement, friend, relative, family, or other opinion or stance of anything. See, it's like totally kind of intense. Mm-hmm. But if you go to my website now and you go down to that first theory section, right? Um. Uh, it says here, uh, I have honestly uh, not seen hardly anyone get in trouble with any of this information. There is a part of me that wants to, quote, warn you as to the application of this technology, but frankly, there is absolutely no real factual basis for that. I launched this website back in March 2022, and I launched the contract killer course on July 2nd, 2022. And tens of thousands of people have involved themselves in this. I get hundreds of messages and emails per day. In all this time, a shockingly low no- amount of people have had absolutely any trouble doing anything in this body of technology. 
Regardless, I would say you should at least have a decent grasp of things prior to moving forward. As long as you are not angry and hostile, in all honesty, you should be fine. And then I did put in all caps here. This is actually very important. Never sign affidavits or anything under penalty of perjury unless you fully understand. Yep. So over all this time, uh, you know, originally I was like, I was like, I didn't really tell people that. I just wanted to have that like kind of notice there. But after after a year and seeing all of the crazy stupidity of people sending shit in and just nothing fucking ever happened bad. I mean, bro, there was people sending shit in. I was like, God damn, there's no fucking way in hell. I mean, if, if you're going to get, you know, I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, God damn, I thought you're going to get like either fucking someone's going to get pissed off or like there's no fucking way they're going to approve any of your shit. It comes back approved. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. I wouldn't even have approved a lot of that shit. Right? I would have been like, fuck this piece of shit. Like, <laughs> fuck this guy. I would have sent that shit back and told him to go fuck himself. Literally, right? <laughs> um, so it's it's just it's 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 beyond way beyond um again, we are working with a religious establishment. We are working within the confines of the religious texts inside of that religious establishment. Nope. The closer we stay to what is written inside the religious texts of the religious establishment, we don't need to worry about anything being approved and not approved because it's always, 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 always going to be approved. The passports are being approved left, right, and center. They're fucked up. They're a mess. They're being approved all over the fucking place. The private motor carrier DOT number doesn't even need to get approved. They give you the goddamn thing right out the fucking gate. You just fill out some fucking computer check boxes. Wow. The 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 revocation of election, once they sign for the parcel, it's game over. You don't need any sort of acknowledgement from the IRS. All you gotta do is mail the goddamn thing and get a signature. If it gets lost in the mail, you send another one. Mm -hmm. As soon as they sign for it and you get the green card back, it's over. It's done. I mean, this is this is easy. That's why people are like, I'm thinking in my head, like I'm opening up a law firm, but I don't know how to litigate. You don't need to litigate to do any of the shit. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. It's so fucking easy. I mean, you could be asleep at the wheel and drunk as shit and cripples. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of reason they would. I mean, if you send in an application for a passport and it's fucked up or whatever, and the what's what's the worst they can do is say no, right? They can't come arrest you for trying to. They don't even say no. What what they do, right. and I've gotten I've gotten a handful of these, not like a lot actually, just very few. Mm -hmm. They say what one of the big ones that we've gotten several several times, a handful of times is you can't print your name in the signature box. They say it needs to be signed, which we oh. assume what that means is cursive. So even if you do without prejudice, by colon Brandon hyphen Joe colon Williams comma agent or slash agent or however you want to do it, you just do the whole goddamn thing in cursive without prejudice. And if you want to go all the way and you want to be fucking copper moonshine stills as fuck, you add in the UCC one dash three zero eight and you can do it all in cursive and then you do by colon brandon or williams comma and brandon you do the whole thing in cursive yep it's not a big fucking deal bro and all you do is just go in they send you a letter they say hey you can't print in the signature box you need to sign it you say okay they don't make you pay again as long as you go to the same location and you don't go to a different location, they say it right in the in the letter. If you go to a different location, there's going to be an additional processing fee. But if you go to the exact same location, there's no additional fees. So all you do is you just go into that same exact location. You write exactly what you wrote the first time, but you make it fucking squiggly and you make it look all fucking crazy pretty, like old school American yep. fucking, you know, Declaration of Independence fucking cursive. Yeah, John Hancock. <sighs> And that shit back in and then they fucking they love it. So that's the worst thing that we've had happen so far. That's really? the wow, worst that's, thing we've had happen so yeah, far. Yeah, that's that there, there could be worse things. Holy shit. And that's cool. We we've, we've gotten a couple like literally like two where they're like, you know, like you you can't be this and and you're a US citizen and 
and and you know you're not a foreign national blah, blah blah we've gotten like two of those but it's like i don't i'm not gonna put a lot of attention on that bro because it's like out of like out of like thirty thousand of these things i've gotten like two of those like bro yeah. you know okay i know a lot about the world and karma and, and this kind of thing right the self-balancing universe and i hate to say it but but if you're getting those kind of letters it's a problem with you as an individual it's not a problem with the system and yeah. i'm not trying to say that as a mean way of making you go into your own mind and wonder like why did i deserve this or whatever but like i feel like people who are getting letters like that they need to kind of like stop for a minute and like not introvert into their own life in a very negative bad way and start thinking about like why am i why is this happening to me or something like that but they should take a moment and and look at their own life and say you know uh you know that th i need to i need to improve my my own existence in some way i need to maybe help out my family a little bit more or maybe like uh they they need to they need to just like kind of monkey wrench their own karma a tad i feel like mm-hmm and I know that might sound crazy to some people, but it's really oh. how I feel. That's really how I feel about this. I feel like nobody's getting these fucking letters, but like two fucking people getting these, like, like, like point zero 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 one percent. It's like, all right, like, I'm not going to focus on that, bro. I'm not yeah. going to focus on that. I'm not going to focus on that. I'm sorry. I'm just not. Um, and I think I think this is a hugely spiritual endeavor, dude. Like, I mean, from my where I come from, I come from like, again, alcoholic got better. I'm going on five years now. Like I really went through the, the born again process. And again, not so much through like the Christian church, but like I, that old dude fucking died and I became a new person literally. And like, I, I live very much off. Like I go with the flow. So like when things come to me, it's because I've been praying for it. Maybe not so much in a begging way, but just like, I need this in my life. So, yeah. and then I throw that out there and I know I have a relationship with God in the way I see it. That, that that shit works its way out. And when your information came to me with a couple other, it, it kind of came to me in a few different ways all at the same time. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And as I started realizing, like, you can get into this and not know at all what the hell you're doing or talking about and in, in your own life. And, and it's going to fuck you up because you do have to have some form of, of understanding of what yourself, who you are as an individual. Because a lot of this is not, it's not about uh, discharging debt. You know what I mean? Like it can be, and there is a part of that, that, that that's what this is. But a lot of it is standing on your own, knowing of, of what the fuck your rights are and what, uh, learning the, the system that has put us into slavery. And that's, that's really where I take it. So this is a hugely spiritual endeavor. It's just putting it, it's taking it and putting it out on this 3D realm that we happen to exist in. You know what I mean? It's like, it matters. And I got people that are like, oh, you're just giving credence to the system if you're doing all this form filling out shit. Dude, no, you're not. You're, you're taking uh, account that you, you might exist on multiple dimensional levels at once, but our point of attention and, and focus is right here, right now. So what we do right here, right now fucking matters. And when you realize you've contracted with Satan, basically, it's kind of like, yeah, I want to undo that. I think, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's where I come at it. So I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of people even on, on this side of the, of the fence that think that black's law is death and like, you shouldn't even use it and fuck all them and fuck all this. And I've blocked some people like that. Cause it's like, you know, it's, it's, you know, I don't, you know, <sighs> When I look in Black's Law, what I see, my perception, is I see a bunch of fucking collections of, of definitions of words that a bunch of people work their fucking asses off to try to sort out in a way that's so verbose and so specific and so clear. And they were trying to work out these definitions to benefit mankind as a whole. And they did a great fucking job. They did a fucking great job, bro. They did a fucking really, really, really fucking good job. And you know, 120 years ago, people could actually read and they had a more, a more verbose, more, more full language, and, and they had a lot more words that they would use on a regular basis because you don't watch fucking YouTube. Yep. You don't play video games, you read. And 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 when you're reading. They didn't have a, a super small vocabulary because it was it was part of the creative process. Yeah. 
and it was part of the respect and it was part of the the culture to enjoy and and to and to immerse like oh a new word it's almost like a new youtube video like oh it's a new word here how cool like, what does this mean you know yeah. there, there it was a whole different you know, and 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 people read that shit and they're like, God damn, why do they have to fucking write like uh all complicated and stuff? Well, you know, that 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 was the that was the brand new hot off the presses uh Brandon Joe Williams infinite money video on YouTube. That what that's what it yep. was. Yeah, totally. That's what it was. And 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 the expression of of words was was you know, I'm assuming it was like one of the heights of of human existence. Sure. So, yes, some of these old definitions and stuff are are difficult, and you have to look up a whole bunch of other definitions to understand this definition, and you wind up in these long chains of definitions and words, and it can be annoying. Yes, but it's like, bro, like you spend a long afternoon doing that, and you're going to clear up a, a tremendous se sector of words. I mean, you can clean up a whole sector in like two full days of hardcore focused intense looking up these definitions this is not like not like an eight-year phd bullshit this right. is like a this is like a just apply yourself quit being a little bitch for a minute and you'll be fine kind of a yep. situation yep that's why i think I people it's... can get that when they have a desire to learn it you know what i mean like so if you hear this shit and you're like eh, and well then you're not going to learn it and i know for a fact there's plenty of people out there that will get kind of into this and go nope because it's just too much there's a lot of reading. There's a lot of like, rep for me, it's repetition. If I hear this shit a bunch, I'll get it. You know what I mean? And I I'll read it and yeah. I'll look at it and I'm not going to memorize it or get it all in the first try. I know that for a fact. So that's why when you were putting your 500, a thousand hours, I'm like, yep, of the same shit over and over and just, man, and, and I, I will, I will learn the shit out of it by that time. You know what I mean? Cause you have well, to look now, up all different little things throughout that too. Yeah. 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 Well now, I mean, I, you know, I don't know how much, how many views have you gotten on our last show? Oh, on mine, uh, probably I'm I'm over a thousand now on on my couple of platforms, which is good for me. That's 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 doing well. You know what I mean? And I've gotten definitely good comments on it too. I saw your platform is killing it with it though, so that's fucking awesome. <laughs> so we're at like we're at like fifteen thousand. Yeah. Uh, uh, between Vimeo, I have I, I put two copies. I put one on Vimeo because the the Vimeo version is the course when they when they go to uh, course uh, advanced course video number five. They're going to go to the Vimeo version. The reason why I do that is because the Vimeo version I know is going to be there. The The YouTube version, who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube likes to just disappear things, you know, because they don't like it or whatever. So I'm kind of Absolutely. staying. Uh, you, Vimeo is like my spinal cord. And then and then, and then then YouTube is like my, my secondary market, right? Uh, I don't really use Rumble. I don't really care. Uh, right. I'd rather just pay for my own shit and then and then like know for a fact it isn't going anywhere and have it be ad free like on Vimeo than than to try to deal with Rumble at this moment in time. Um, but um uh you know, dude, there's tons, tons, even my business partner, who I've tried to explain this to a couple of times, and and he 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 understands it better than he thinks he does, but he kind of pretends that he doesn't. Uh I don't know why some people do that. Yeah. Uh uh tons. Of people are mailing shit in now, bro. Tons, tons. That's what we tons. need. Tons. Yeah. There's so many fucking remittance coupons and restrictively endorsed instruments that are getting mailed in right now. It's unbelievable, bro. Unbelievable. Now, the cool thing about that is, see, what happens is that people get these bills and they feel overwhelmed by the bills. I can't pay it. I'm worried. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about my credit score. These people, you know, the reason why people love this content so much is because it, it takes you from a little bitch slave on a fucking leash on the ground, barking like a dog, like in a fucking gimp suit. And it flips the whole thing around to where now you're the one holding the leash and the credit card companies on the fucking gimp suit. Yep. All within like three seconds. It's like, yeah. boom. like <laughs> so the thing is, is it's like, it's like, uh, it, it, it places you back on the throne where you're supposed to be. In a, in an absolutely uh wildly rapid pace, like a like a spaceship. So in three and a half hours, we're getting people up to where it took me, you know, nine months to get to mm -hmm. and piece it together. So so where are we gonna be in a year from now? Is the question. Yeah, right. Is the system even still gonna be running the same in a year? Because so much has been withdrawn. They're gonna have to start. I I I feel they're just being like, well, we'll change the rules. 
You know, I don't, uh, I've had a lot of people tell me that. I don't think that's what's going to happen. And the reason why is because a lot of these acts and a lot of these things that we're operating off of uh, all come from very, very old. Sesta KV comes from 1666. Uh, Bill of Exchange Act comes from 1882. Uh, Emergency Banking Act comes from 1933. Uh, this is not some shit that happened uh, a couple of years ago. This is not Patriot Act shit. Right. This is not uh, 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 1971 Gold Standard Act, uh, whatever the fuck it's called. I don't think it's called that. It, it's it's This is some old ass shit, brother. And and do I think they're going to? The, I think I think what's going to happen is they're not going to change the system. It's too hard. It's too complicated. It's too convoluted. It's too fucked up. They're just going to blow the whole goddamn thing up to smithereens, right? Like that's from kinda... top to bottom. Yeah, that's their backup plan. Um, hey, that's what that I could win, backfire. Dude, yeah, that could well, backfire on them, though. See, yeah, that, well, that, because that's to a, me, the, currency the self, is food. Food, yeah, man. A, growing your food in your yard. That's, you know, I'm I'm a little bit uh, they, they have the a, system about it, but. <laughs> they, they have a self-destruct system, I think. And, and but the thing yeah. is that the, the, the self-destruct system, it, it's a bit, it's a roll in the dice kind of circumstance. When you blow the whole goddamn thing up from A to Z, that's, ooh, that's, you know. It's bold. You don't know where, you know, you really don't know where that's going to land. That's, 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 that's when you know the train is starting to really seriously go in the direction you don't want it to go. And, and you know, for a fact, there ain't no stopping anymore. They're going to hit that red button. Yep. That's what I think is going to happen. Maybe not. Maybe not. The, 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 the beauty of the system, and, and I will hand it to them, is that there, there's, there's quotes of them, of the, the 12 families and stuff like that talking about that they have plausible deniability. Now, the real truth of the matter is they actually do have plausible deniability because all they have to do is say, hey, no problem, bro. We'll give you guys all infinite credit. Uh, uh, you're the best. Thank you so much. Here's all the infinite credit you need. Here's all your private DOT numbers. Here's everything. Like, hey, sorry that we didn't really like totally communicate. Uh, uh, let's fix it right now. And and everyone's just kind of cool, right? Cool, right down. All the pitchforks are going to be put down. All the burning, all the burning fucking uh, 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 things that they have in their hands. That they're, you know, all the pitchforks and burning pieces of wood and all that. It's just like, all right, like it's just instantaneously going to de-escalate the whole situation. That but would be, that would be nice. <laughs> but the problem with that choice is, is it 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 totally ends the the their little train of what they're trying to do where they're trying to go with everything right so right they're gonna have to make a decision at some point do we do we acquiesce and save our own skin or do we hit the self-destruct button and see what happens uh right. and and that that button might 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 wind them up in the in the soup in, in a graveyard so 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 they're gonna have to make that choice um they're going to have to make that choice of which 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 button they want to hit. Do they want to hit the 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 uh, shut the system down, uh, you know, uh, calmly and quietly and walk away alive button, or do they want to hit the let's roll the dice and see what happens explosive button? Yeah, psychopaths seem to be dice rollers, but I mean, you know, who knows? We'll I, see. When enough people amass we're, we're outside also, of your mansion also... with pitchforks they might go well you know yeah, yeah. but we're also <laughs> we're also going through another thing you got to keep in mind too is a lot of these families and a lot of these guys like your 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 rockefellers and a lot of these guys they're going through a generational swap right now like for example george soros mm -hmm. his son just took over the whole goddamn thing mm -hmm. a lot of these guys that are responsible for this whole generational thing that's going on right now they're all they're all coming to the end of their reign and they're passing the reign down to a much younger next member of the family. Yeah. You don't know what that means. You don't know what that means. That's true. You really don't know what that means. Um, there's a lot of generational uh, uh, passing off of the torch that's occurring right now. A lot. Yeah. A lot. So you have, you have the generational torch passing combined with everybody figuring all this shit out. It's a it's a very unique situation. We are in a powder keg world. I mean, there's yeah. so, and that's this is just the two things, dude. We could talk for another two hours about all the other crazy shit that I don't really know that much about. But that's where my show goes. That's what that's who I, you know, talk about whatever. 
the, the border, terrorism, uh, weather weapons, um, whatever might happen on some sort of weird metaphysical level. Uh, there, you know, uh, holy shit, dude, there's so much that's all kind of coming to a point right now. Uh, we just got a king coronated and they wanted everybody, they, they actually said out loud, they want everybody at home watching this to pledge allegiance to, to King Charles. It's like, dude, what are you in England? When they coronated him a couple, what was it? Just a few weeks ago. And they, oh, they, I, they, I they were, they were, they were like, yeah, dude, oh, there, I have this video that just goes through like, I mean, the guy's like, basically he's written a book that shows that King Charles is the antichrist. Okay. That's where his stance point is. And he just goes through all the shit and shows all the pomp and circumstance and all the craziness that goes on with that shit. It's, it's insanity, dude. It's just like wow. the fact that we even have people that, and they're all like, Oh, the, the King. And it's just like, are you fucking serious, dude? And yeah, people are all over themselves to watch these people get these crowns and jewels and shit put on them. And all the scepters and wands and rods and swords and shit, and this cloak of gold and all this weird shit that goes on. And it's just, it's insanity. And they, they take it super, super serious. It's just well, like, one wow. Of the, I don't know a lot about all this, but one thing I do know is that there's only one human being on the planet, from my research, that does not need a passport to travel, which is the Queen of England. So if you, if, if, if that is true, which, which I haven't, I haven't taken tremendous amounts of effort to verify all right. the ins and outs of that information. But if that's right. true, that would mean that all passports internationally stem back to the crown. <clears throat> now that's an interesting subject in itself, which I haven't really taken a tremendous amount of time to try to figure all that out. But um, it's, it's, it's all very interesting. And, and, you know, and, and again, you know, I think one of the, the primary issues with the conspiracy theory world mm -hmm. is assuming that all of these people know about all of this. Right. But I'm telling you, I've talked to a lot of people, bankers and billionaires, bro. They don't know a goddamn thing, bro. They don't know a goddamn thing. Yeah. Well, you said there was what forty thousand people, roughly. I don't know who where that number came from, but you're saying like what twenty eighteen, there was roughly forty three or forty so thousand people. According to yeah, registered. according to like one thing I saw, it's like forty five thousand people were registered as state nationals through the passport system, and forty thousand of that forty five thousand were also bar card holders. Yeah, weird. So not that many people, and and so whether... five thousand people yeah. nationally, right were not lawyers that knew about this information, probably from like Copper Moonshine stills. And 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 Christopher Hauser. <laughs> well, Christopher Hauser is very new. Copper Moonshine stills oh, he was like one of the only pieces of information you would have ever been uh been able to find. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't realize how new uh Hauser was. I thought Hauser was twenty twenty one. Oh shit. Oh okay. Wow. I didn't realize he was that maybe that like new. maybe even twenty two, like December twenty one, January twenty two. Okay. Maybe November yeah. 21, maybe November. I think November 21. Well, I can look on here and see. I mean, it's it's very, 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 very new. Christopher Hauser. So have you heard of, and you? I don't, I don't know, this dude, um, I wish I, I have to look his, oh, here we go. Uh, Kurt Kallenbach. No, but let me check this real quick. Kurt uh, he does this whole like 25 minute thing on the it's just called the birth certificate and he just he's he just talks about how they created a mirror world when you're born and he draws it up on a big whiteboard and he's got father and mother at the top and mom and dad at the bottom and then like he just goes through the whole thing and he, he he's got a really good i don't know i've only seen one of his videos but 30 minutes of him just explaining the wordplay. It's just a different dude's version of how they created this mirror world and how they did it with, with the mother's hand and, and using her energy to, to sign away this thing. And then they had, they created this thing by doing that and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, wow, holy shit. It's just, it's, it's just another depth to the, to the words. It's crazy. It's really cool. He's fucking super smart. I love that. So, so Chris Hauser's first video that he posted the very, very first one, was October 21st of 2021. Wow. Okay, wow, shit. I thought he was way uh doing that way longer than that. So Copper no, Moonshine no, no. Stills would have been the would be the OG then, huh? Yo, fuck yeah, bro. Copper Moonshine Stills is as OG as it gets. Okay. Uh, 
I mean, Anna von Reitz and, and David Strait and all those guys are super OG, but right, when it comes right. to the, the passport system specifically, it'd be uh, the big man, the big boy. Yeah. Copper. This is uh copper moonshine stills. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, I mean, the website looks like it's from the nineties. It's really old looking, but I don't know. There's no, um, there's no, um, there's no dates to this. <laughs> if you scroll all the way down to his state national page that talks about the passport system, he has a fucking, you know, like way back in the nineties, they had counters at the bottom of the pages. Yeah. He has a counter on his page. <laughs> 90,908. It's a, it's like an old school, like 1996 counter. If I had to just like throw some shit in the air and say, you know, this, 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 this copper moonshine stills might be some old ass shit, bro. I don't know when he, when he posted this, but I, I don't know, man, this might be some 10, 15 year old shit. I mean, I'd say this is probably one of the oldest bodies of information um some of the stuff here says 2016 some of the writing i don't know if that was added later um a lot of information a lot of case law he's got an example here on a cease and desist letter um downloads downloading affidavit of complaining witnesses um here yeah so it's a very fascinating very old i know one guy who's following me who's who's involved in all this process he knows this guy personally in arkansas oh, oh nice oh wow that's he, pretty he cool. goes over and visit visits him and shit um i mean he says right on here like like, you know, if you don't understand this, then go fuck yourself. He's like, he's like me, basically. Yeah, uh, and that's right. That's the best way to be, to protect yourself, because otherwise people come after you and be like, dude, I followed your thing, and now my life sucks, and it's your fault. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not my fault. Or they want to ask 8 million fucking dumbass questions. Yeah. Oh, my so God. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, so. I sent wow. you a link in the chat here on the Zoom uh, of that Kurt Collenbach thing. Uh, it's 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 super interesting, if nothing else, just just something to check out. Very that, cool. And I think he goes on and on and on. I think he's got books and books. Somebody just said, oh, you're into that? And, I, you know, they saw our interview. And they said, oh, that's super cool, man. I love that shit. And and they sent me this and said, I've, I've been reading this dude's book, and he's crazy. And it's kind of in that same, along those same lines. Clearly, he's talking about it or coming at it from a different angle. Uh, but talking about, you know, very similar, the whole the whole scheme. He's just, he's at a different, you know, different angle at it. So, really cool. Oh, yeah. And there, and then uh, there's another dude that I follow called uh, Revival of Wisdom, and he's more into like uh, I don't know I don't know what you'd say esoteric information like uh, uh, why not to masturbate and keep your 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 your, your um, like no fab and like uh, kundalini energy retention. and all that yeah. raising it up to your your chakra inside your pine cone right and opening your pine cone your pineal gland and 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 just all, like that kind of information, and he he did a whole video on this. Yeah, and he talked about and he brought it up to the point of, you know, banks are called banks, like just because it's like you look at money as water and it's a currency, right? It, it's got flow, cash flow, and the banks are up on the on either side because it's going from here to there. And he goes into a whole spiel about it. So a lot of people are figuring well, this that's out. All, and they're coming that's all at Jordan it. Maxwell. That's all Jordan Maxwell. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jordan yeah. Maxwell stuff. So, yeah, it's just it, a lot of people are getting it and putting it into more. I mean, yeah, Jordan Maxwell did it. A lot more people are hearing about it now, though. So that's what makes me happy. Yeah, Jordan about it, Maxwell like, was was really uh, a oh. huge element. I mean, a lot of the stuff that you see getting shared everywhere is is Jordan Maxwell. Yeah, that's why From I like twenty years ago. That's why this podcast is called Nothing New Under the Sun. I mean, really, because because he he popularized that in my mind. Like, oh wow, you know what I mean? Like, I I loved his research on all sorts of his stuff. So yeah, yeah his shit was great. His mm -hmm. shit was great. Yep. Uh, real quick, I re realized that earlier in the show we never covered what uh, vehicle registration is oh right that's right you talked about it for a second yeah so we can talk about that now it's 34 usc 12 611 motor vehicle theft prevention program and like i said people get pissed about this man real pissed i got pissed I, it's just crazy i don't know why so it says here um 
motor vehicle meaning uh, uh like we said earlier 18 usc 31 um a commercial vehicle that's uh, being operated for comp- some sort of compensation for transporting goods or people for compensation or consideration and that uh, that would not include a private motor carrier, which is transporting its own goods, not for compensation. So by definition, in order for it to be uh, within the definition of motor vehicle, it would have to be transporting someone else's goods as an exclusive um, service, like a um, like a UPS. UPS would be, uh, the only way UPS could get out of, this particular definition would be they would have to uh, get every single person that signs up for UPS services to state that during transport, UPS actually owns the parcel in transport. That's how they would get around this. Okay. Okay. So that said, uh, uh, the the motor vehicle theft present, prevent, pre- prevention program has to do with motor vehicles, which is vehicles that are operating uh, uh solely and explicitly in for commercial purposes, transporting someone else's goods or cargo for compensation or transporting people for compensation. Okay. The owner of a motor vehicle may voluntarily sign a consent form within the participating state or locality in which the motor vehicle uh, owner states that the vehicle is not normally operated under certain specif- specified conditions and agrees to display program decals or devices on the owner's vehicle, which is your uh, different color tags that you have for the different months. Mm -hmm. And this is where the big, the big, the big kicker in the balls permit law enforcement officials in any state to stop the motor vehicle and take reasonable steps to determine whether the vehicle is being operated by or with the permission of the owner. Hmm. If the vehicle is being operated under the specified conditions. Wow. So let me see your registration and insurance, please. So registration, the definition of registration means that you're paying a yearly fee to voluntarily include yourself in the motor vehicle theft prevention program. Motor vehicle is a commercial vehicle used only and exclusively on the highways for the purpose of transporting other people's goods or cargo or or bodies, people's bodies, right. for some sort of valuable compensation or uh, payment for the service of transporting that cargo or bodies. Okay, uh, that particular service it's considered a service. It's like a subscription service. Yeah, that particular service essentially, um, even here, of subsection two. Uh, participating states and localities authorize law enforcement officials in the state or locality to stop motor vehicles, displaying program decals, which is your your different color um, monthly or yearly yearly uh, sticker that yep. has a different color for each year, um, uh, or under specified conditions, and take reasonable steps to determine whether the vehicle is being operated by or with the permission of the owner. The motor vehicle theft prevention program developed pursuant to this section shall inform a uniform design or designs for decals or other devices to be displayed by motor vehicles participating in the program. The uniform design shall be highly visible and explicitly state that the motor vehicle to which it is affixed may be stopped under the specified conditions without additional grounds for establishing a reasonable suspicion that the vehicle is being operated unlawfully. Now, this is very, very important. Reasonable suspicion. So now we're going to type in reasonable articulatable suspicion, RAS. This is the term that the police uh, law enforcement uses to describe uh, what they need to pull over a vehicle or to detain you, let's say, even while you're walking. They need what's called um, a reasonable articulatable um, uh, suspicion, right? Uh, it's, it's, uh, the police may stop, uh, reasonable suspicion is enough to ju- justify a stop. Uh, let's see here. What is reasonable articulable suspicion? This is from a law offices page. So it could be a little bit colored. We have to be mm-hmm. careful about this. Um, in Maine law enforcement cannot simply detain 
uh, simply pull you your car over or detain you on a whim. Actually, they can if you have registration, by the way. This is actually false information. If you have an active uh, registration sticker, they actually can pull you over and detain you on a whim. This is actually false. Uh, to stop your vehicle, the officer must have a reasonable, articulable suspicion that you are violating law or traffic regulation to pull you over. Any officer that stops your car without reasonable articulable suspicion has violated your constitutional rights. This violation could have a profound impact on your case. They don't really even talk about this too much. Um, here we go. Uh, reasonable articulable suspicion, RAS, explain. Reasonable articulable suspicion is closely related to another legal standard known as probable cause. Probable cause is the high standard police officers must meet before they can search a vehicle or arrest a suspect. Reasonable articulable suspicion is a lower standard than probable cause. Reasonable articulable suspicion is the belief <laughs> by a reasonable person that the suspect violated a law or regulation. The standard is subjective. There is no bright line between a reasonable person uh, beyond between what a reasonable person would or would not find to be evidence of crime to meet the standard law enforcement officers must articulate the facts they believe show a suspect has committed a crime. Well, wow. common, common factors that result in reasonable people suspicion. The police do not have to wait for a serious offense to stop your, your, your car. If they have a uh, reasonable articulable suspicion of any traffic violation from speeding to driving with a broken taillight, they can lawfully pull you over to investigate. Some of the common factors that result in reasonable articulable suspicion include the following driving the wrong way, speeding, running a stop sign, mechanical issues. Now, this only applies uh, if you have a motor vehicle. If you have a private motor carrier, none of this is true because driving the wrong way is a commercial crime. Speeding is a commercial crime. Running a stop sign is a commercial crime. Mechanical issues is a commercial crime. So, so there's actually two additional elements that none of these law offices will ever talk about. Uh, the first one is that you the, the police officer does not need RAS if you have active, current, non-expired registration tax. They can they can pull you over. They don't need a goddamn fucking. They could be drunk, and just not like the shape of your car, and they can pull you over and detain you instantaneously. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I do believe in in the uh, in the theft um, prevention program. Um, it says here the voluntary consent form used to enroll in this program shall clearly state that the participation in the program is voluntary, which they never do that. So uh, it's fraud. Uh, yeah. Clearly explain that participation in the program means that. Uh, if the participating vehicle is being operated under the specific conditions, law enforcement officials may stop the vehicle and take reasonable steps to determine whether it is being operated by or with the consent of the owner. Even if the law enforcement officials have no other basis for believing that the vehicle is being operated unlawfully. Now, real quick on that, when they say consent of the owner, we've at this point, this person has given their title to the, to the state. So do they mean the, like, that, that the state is is allowing them to give them so that, that that's what they're checking when they're saying that there means they're coming to check on your sticker to make sure that the state has given you that sticker to allow you to drive this vehicle that you think you own. Is that what that's saying? No, what it is, 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 is it's, it's a motor vehicle theft prevention program. The name of the program kind of gives it away. So what it is, is it's like, Oh, I, I see. You, you're, you're going to the state. I get it. And you're saying, Hey, I would like to enroll in the voluntary program called the Motor Vehicle Theft Prevention Program, which protects my commercial motor vehicle from theft by me enrolling and paying in a program that waives my rights and permits anyone, any police officer to pull over my vehicle to determine and make sure that whoever's driving my vehicle has permission to drive it. And if they don't, by definition, it's theft. As per the theft prevention program, the police officer would then take actions to seize that vehicle from the person who has stolen my vehicle. Wow. Yeah. And they never mention that ever. No cop in my life that I've ever heard say, well, you're, you know what I mean? Ever. That's never well, been Well, I've never, I've never met a police officer that knew anything about any of this. Okay. Okay. So they don't know this. Okay. 
No, uh, I don't think there's probably a police officer on the planet that knows the definition of what registration is. And once they find out, they probably go through a massive moral twang in their own existence, and they're probably sent to another area. They're probably sent <laughs> away from traffic. <laughs> you know, and we can go even farther than that. Uh, what is the legal definition of traffic in the United States Code? Right. Here's another one that's going to fucking rip your, your face clean off. Right. Uh, the term traffic means um, a to transport, transfer, or otherwise dispose of to another as consideration for anything of value. B to make or obtain control of with the intent to do so to tr uh, transport, transfer, or otherwise dispose of. But this is um, this is not a trans this is not a transportation specific definition. Let's see if we can find a transportation specific. Uh, you know, you see it's code, um, uh, title 34. Let's see. Title Maybe 30. ask for a noun versus a oh, verb. No, I think we got it already. <laughs> I think we got it already. Uh, title 34 is what we needed here. Let's see. Law enforcement officer definition. Uh, that's interesting. What does that say? Okay. Interesting. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. What we got? What we got? We are looking for um, the definition of traffic. Let's do a search. Yeah. The hell is that second one going to? Traffic. Traffic. Not seen it here. I have seen it before. Let's see. Uh, one two two nine one. That could be something. Let's take a look. Traffic. Okay. Traffic. I typed in traffic as a noun, and it gives me the vehicles, pedestrians, ships, or planes moving along a route, the volume of customers visiting a business establishment, the passengers or cargo carried by a transportation system, import and export trade, communication or dealings, especially between individuals or groups. No, for a fact, I found this because I remember I saved it. Let me just check my notes here. It's a lot to remember all this. Uh, let me see. It's also a pretty badass band from the 60s and 70s. There you go. Uh... Uh, uh, here's damn 49 USC. Let's, let's try. What is the, we're going to find this. You're going to see, this is how I fucking live my life. What <laughs> is the defin the legal definition of traffic from title 49? Uh, this is the one here. This is this kind of clears it up. Uh, the definition of commerce means trade, traffic, and transportation, right here. Uh, in the jurisdiction of the United States, between uh, a place in a state and the place outside of that state, which means the corporate states. They're all located in the District of Columbia. In the United States, that affects trade, traffic, and transportation described in subclause A. Uh, but we're going to back up and see what is this. Let's see if we can find it here. We got traffic safety administration. That's under Homeland Security, is it not? I don't know. Um, wait, what is each point? Traffic. I've seen this definition. I can't believe. 
but I'm having such a hard time finding this. I have seen this definition. I know it exists. Um, definition of motorcycle. Uh, let's see here. You'd think they'd have traffic then, for sure. Maybe they have it. It's in alphabetical order. Nope. T-R-U. Let's keep looking just a little bit longer and see if we can find it. What is happening here? Okay, this is not anything useful. We've already looked at that one. Son of a bitch. Let's see, this one looks different. Let's try this one. Um, I remember seeing it. I, I don't know where, but I remember seeing it. Um, here's a motor, motor private carrier, uh, motor carrier. Um, traffic means literally like, like, like comp commercial flow. Like it, it means, it means like fucking let's try this one. Traffic control. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, son of a bitch, I'm going to have to find this and then I'm going to have to. Yeah, that'll be one to uh, put a little note next to, a little star next to, huh? Yeah. So that's sex trafficking. <laughs> yeah, I, that's another. That's another. What is what is sex trafficking? <laughs> sex trafficking is is it's the same definition. It's a commercial. It's a commercial term. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can't find this, but I'm telling you, telling you, let's see. Oh, shit. What oh. is this? There it is. Uh, ridden or herded animals, vehicles, street cars, and other conveyances. Hmm. Either singly or together while using any highway. Oh, man, let's see. Uh, that's, not the, that's not the definition I've seen, but let's see. Traffic, lane. Anyways, uh, I could have sworn I'd seen it somewhere. I'll have to find it. Uh, well, it's one of those things where we will believe you, and then we will dig for it ourselves, and I'm sure at some point you'll throw it up, and then we'll probably find it too, and people will email you and say, hey, here it is. <laughs> exactly. So and you'll be like, I know, I fucking found it the day after I got off the, yeah, the right? thing. An hour <laughs> after, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so this, this, uh, this, these law firms don't have a fucking clue, bro, which is why my law firm's going to be the sickest shit ever. Right. Uh, now, do you think they don't know or do you think they just don't talk oh, about no, it? You no, think they I, just I, literally don't I think know. they don't have a mother fucking clue. If they've been doing this for 35 years, yeah, maybe like once or twice in 35 years, there was like a teeny little something they experienced that, 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 that was a little bit, weird that they never even looked into and they just kind of threw it off to the side right uh that no these people don't have a fucking clue yeah you know it's funny i mentioned this to a dude that i'm dealing with another lawyer for some other reason and and i mentioned to him this because he kept he was trying to seriously sell me on the idea that paying my taxes was like my duty like seriously as an american and that i should be that's that's a good thing and i'm just like oh my god dude like i didn't even really try how to did that get started how did that get started you were telling him that you don't pay taxes anymore or what did well, you I say was telling him I'm, I'm getting ready to be in that position uh, and i i just i calmly explained to him a few things that i was about to do and that i'm not going to be liable for taxes anymore i'm not even going to be a citizen of the united states and he goes well let me just tell you first thing he wanted to do was warn me about all you people <laughs> And how I was being conned and scammed and how much did I pay for the class? And uh, and I was just telling him, dude, look, I'm just learning stuff and, and it's free and, and, you know, whatever else. And he goes, oh, well, 
I, I just know some people that have, have gone down that road and they just, they got themselves in a lot of trouble. So all I'm saying is for, you know, two cents worth of good advice is to just, you know, just, just maintain where you're at and, and pay your taxes and, and just, he, and then he went into a story about how uh, the Sopra Tony Soprano uh, slept well at night because he made sure to give the IRS their cut. And I mean, that was, and then he kind of laughed and was like, so there you go. And I'm like, oh, okay, well then I'll just totally do that now. <laughs> I mean, like, I, like I said, I just mentioned to him briefly, I was like, dude, there's a whole, because he was talking about maybe your, my mom's tax issue could be passed down to me. And I'm like, I hope it does at that point. You know what I mean? Because I'm just not going to be liable for it. And he's like, well, you need to make sure. I'm like, bro, at a point when I end up in a court that's that's due for like some sort of tax shit and the first question is are you a u.s citizen and it's like no and then it's like okay well then are you well the no the first question is are you jonathan blank right and then yeah no that's the first question right they're not going to yep. ask you u.s citizen they're going to ask you your name in all capital letters um i've had so many reports you know i'm, I'm probably going to start going into the courtroom just sitting there and watching everything it's gonna be painful as fuck right uh but but I've heard stories, many, many stories where there's people line up. Are you blah, blah, blah? Yes. Th thank you. Move forward. Are you blah, blah, blah? Yes. Thank you. Move forward. Are you blah, blah, blah? Yes. Thank you. Move forward. They come up. Are you blah, 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 blah? I, that's, that's a name that I've been told might represent me, but that's not my name. Okay. Sit over here, please. Next. Are you blah, blah, blah? Thank you. Move. Like literally like no joke, dude. I've heard really? the stories multiple times. Yeah. And so sit over here, please. Then what happens? Well, then what they do is they, so, so I've had many reports. Uh, uh, what they do is they wait until uh, the very end of the day when there's nobody in there, mm -hmm. and then they call you up there. There's no witnesses. Right. They don't want anybody hearing about what you're about ready to say. Yep. And I've heard that. I've heard that from a lot of people, rookies, first timers, uh, old timers. I've heard that from everybody over and over and over and over again. That's how it goes down. <laughs> and the ideal situation, obviously, for a situation like that is to bring your own witnesses. But I've, I've, I've known a lot of guys like Joe Lustick and stuff that have had success by themselves after hours. It's just kind of a high pressure situation. You've got no witnesses. Uh, ideally, you can bring some witnesses with you. Hmm, that would be yeah. the ideal scene. If you can bring some family members, tell them, don't worry about nothing. Just sit there and just watch and listen and just pay attention. You don't need to understand or agree with anybody. All, all you're there to do is just listen and to, and, and to look, and that's it. I'm yep. not asking for you to, to agree with me or anything. I just need some fucking backup here, okay? Uh, that That's a good thing to have in a situation like that. Uh, you're going to have a lot more control over the court if you have someone there who's a witness of yours. Yeah. And Because they don't want any witnesses. And, and record it. Witnesses. Yeah. yeah, right? Record. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Um, that's gotta be, that's where the brass part comes in, man. You gotta have brass at that point to go into court and start saying this shit. Like, and I know people do it, but just to me, like where my, where my nervousness level is like, holy shit, I don't want to go into court right now. I'm not, I'm not ready to start talking about that stuff to people. Oh, shit. I know. Well, that's <laughs> why, that's why I've always been trying as hard as I can to do everything I possibly can to not have to go to court. It's just right. that now I'm getting to the point now where if I want infinite money, I got to go to court. There's yep. no other, there's no other options. I've exhausted all other options. I've sent uh, four parcels and I've gotten multiple disputes to open and I've done this and I've done that. And I've done all these different things and it's discharged all the dead. It's all gone. I don't need to, I, you know, that was cool. But, but if I want infinite money, if I really, really want it, like this is what I have to do. So, yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm super stoked to follow you on your, on your path and, and pick up the crumbs and, and that, that will help me get to my, uh, to my place of, of solace. You know what I mean? Cause this is, this is fantastic. It's just a, it's just a realization of freedom. And it's like, dude, once you kind of get yourself into a status, you can do whatever the shit you want. And that's what I like about this is it's not like, okay, you do this and then you do this. And there's, there's really no templates. It's like, you gotta just learn this shit and then live a different life. Yep, fucking, it's a fucking um, awesome dude. That's I'm I'm in. I'm in. I'm so in because it's it's, and I knew I I had a, a feeling deep down inside somewhere along the road, going to court and sitting there and and feeling like. Like you're wrong, you're bad. There's no hope. You're at this dude's mercy, and I'm like, this just isn't right. I shouldn't feel like this. I and it's like this can't be right. 
that it's just like I, I've lost the minute they hand me a ticket on the road and I just have to go through the losing process. What the fuck? Fuck that. And now I know that that's not the case. So but the, the, the big secret in all of this is that the prosecution doesn't know anything about the codes. The, the judge knows very little about the codes. The police officer knows literally fuck all about the codes. Uh, you, you know, a few codes, like even like, like we would mention earlier, earlier today, like 26 USC 7806 section subsection two or whatever it is. Oh my God. You're, you're, you're already, you're already 15,000 miles above everybody there. Yep. Just that one piece of the puzzle, just that one single piece construction of title title 26 construction of title. I think it's 26 USC 7806. Uh, yeah. Let me actually just pull that up real quick. Cause it's uh, really important. Uh, 26 USC 7806 construction of title. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, your, your seven didn't work for some reason. Oh, six construction of title subsection B no inference implication or presumption. Now, this is involving all of Title 26. Title 26 is the Internal Revenue Code. Uh, if you guys want me to show you that real quick, you go to U.S. Code. Uh, it shows Table of Contents. You go down to Title 26. It says here, Internal Revenue Code. Okay. Title 26, Section 7806, which in, is involving the construction of the entire Title 26, the entire tax code. No inference, implication, or presumption of legislative construction shall be drawn or made by reason of the location or grouping of any particular section or provision of or portion of this title, nor shall any table of contents, table of cross-references, or similar outline analysis or descriptive matter relating to the contents of this title be given any legal effect. And people will make excuses. You show that to a fucking lawyer or an accountant, bro. You, you that that's like that's like uh that's like setting up like a like a like a haunted house and giving someone like psychedelics secretly without them knowing, <laughs> and then they like wake up in a haunted house and they like actually go completely psychotic and have yeah. like a full blown like like mind breaking psychotic break. Okay. <laughs> Uh, they, you're, you're going to make them nervous. They're going to start jittering. They're going to be sweating. They're going to be slurring their words. They're going to be making so many different excuses. They're going to be manufacturing excuses at, at, at a, a, a rate of mental energy that they probably haven't experienced since they were younger. Yep. It's like, it's like, it's like taking someone out in the desert and, and tying them up and 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 putting them on their knees right in front of a grave putting a gun to the back of their head and then all of a sudden they just start making up whatever the fuck they need to make up i'll do this i'll do that <laughs> uh, i'll yeah. do whatever you want here's this information here's it's like it's the same exact <laughs> death phenomena yeah yeah it's going to occur if you show an accountant or a lawyer uh uh this subsection kind of like what that's you because experience. they get paid to read uh, really and and no shit and then they well imagine they this Ima imagine that they didn't read imagine yeah imagine working imagine imagine going to school for eight years yeah. spending all this money building an entire practice and then having a guy who's a human pickle on the internet called one stupid fuck show up in jorts <laughs> and show you that your entire existence is is a complete fallacy that's pretty rough it's yep. pretty rough. That's a pretty rough pill to swallow. Let me yeah, tell you, like I is. do, I do understand and empathize to some degree with their position. Not that I won't crush their entire existence into dust and enjoy doing every second of it, but I, I don't, I, I'm not quick to do that necessarily. If, if they, if they want to really, really push my buttons, I'll probably show this to them. Mm -hmm. And if they want to continue to push my buttons, and then I will, I will bring down the crushing mechanism on them. But I don't do it in in this sort of like spiteful, vengeful sort of fashion. It's just uh, right. And once just, you get to that level of where you know you have so much weight that you can set down on somebody, there's no reason to slam it down. No. You can just start piling stuff on. It's like on beating up you, kids. Yeah. It's like beating up kids at the fucking kindergarten, bro. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's like going into the fucking kindergarten with a baseball bat and just start like smashing fucking kids' heads in. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Yep. Uh so 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 it's funny because here we are, all all of us fucking dumbasses 
going and looking at a few things on the internet. And then within 10 seconds, we can run circles around these lawyers and these accountants. It's hilarious. And that's why they flip out and start doing the, oh my God, here's all this evidence and blah, 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 coming up with excuses. Cause there's, they, they can't fathom that they spent the money they did on a degree. Specifically, if you're talking about tax related stuff and they don't know this shit and some dude off the street comes in and says, well, then pull it up on your tablet and let's read it together real quick. Right. And yeah. they just go, oh, shit. Like, yeah, they don't want to go there. That's why the dude wouldn't pull it up on his tablet when I was sitting across from him and tell oh, him yeah. it's never been enacted into law. I said, let's look it up. Come on, dude. Let's look it up. I'm tapping the table. I'm like, you know, I was one moment where I was excited because he was like, no, dude, Title 26. It's law. It's in the thing. I said, well, but it's never been enacted. There's no enactment clause. I was it's like, called, look yeah, it up. exactly. No. And I said, clause, I said, exactly. let's look this up, dude. And he his face, he looked like I just showed him him getting caught doing some shit that he didn't think anybody knew about. It, the look on his face. And then he was just like, no, he just didn't want to look it up. And I was like, cool. I let it go. I knew I won that one. I knew I won that one right there. I was like, I win. Huh. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the last line is the, is the, is the accountant killer. This is, this is, if you want to legally kill an accountant, you show them this one line. The preceding sentence also applies to the side notes and ancillary tables obtained in the various prints of this act before its enactment into law. Enactment into law. What is an enactment clause? The constitutional, um, the constitutionally required portion of a bill which formally expresses the intent that it become law. This has never happened for Title Twenty Six ever. Right. Yep, I remember. Now you the way the, the way that Title Twenty Six operates is from uh, Twenty Six CFR One Point Eight Seven One Dash One. It operates on a completely voluntary contractual agreement. That's how it actually works. It's not it's not enacted into law. It's called positive law. What what is positive law? Statutes would have been which have been laid down by a legislature, court, or other human institution and take whatever form the authors want, right? But it's basically like activated. Right? Uh it's a term, it's a title that has been enacted as a statute. To enact the title uh, a positive law codification bill is introduced in, to, in Congress. So Congress has never actually approved Title 26, which is insane. I don't even think Congress knows this, which is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, it, it, Congress doesn't even realize that the tax law isn't even real. It's yeah. literally made up. And and they and, all the pay tax it. Law, yeah, yeah. And they all pay it. And, and they all the pay it. And they law, all use it as a reason not to get yep. elected. They go, well, we're yep. going to look into your taxes, Bubba. And they, I mean, it's just yeah. so ridiculous. Oh, so the, the tax law, the tax law only applies as a voluntary contractual body. Yeah. So when you voluntarily contract into it, that's okay, but it's not, it's never been enacted as positive law. It doesn't actually really even exist as part of the United States Code. And what's funny is if you type in uh, what is a court of the United States uh, definition, I believe this is another area where you can see this. Um, let's see. Uh, let me see. Uh, are tax courts considered courts uh, of the United States? Question mark. Uh, this may take me more than three seconds to look up. But if you look up, there's a definition of court of the United States that explicitly says that it does not include tax courts. Yeah, there Let's it see is. here. Court of the U.S. Uh, let see here. I think it was in the course. I think I put it in the course. Um, uh, U.S. tax courts aren't even courts of the United States. They're actually full-blown fake courts that are run by the IRS. It even says here... Uh, it is an independent judicial forum. Uh, it is, is not controlled or connected with the Internal Revenue Service. Oh, interesting. I don't know. I have to look up. I would need to look it up some more, but I remember seeing, is the tax court a special federal court? Um, have the authority. Hmm. 
Let's see here. God damn it, those fucking ads are huge. I know. How ridiculous. Okay, let's see. Um And and just real quick, most oh, of this sh- most oh. of this goes on in Canada too. Most of this is good for Canada too, right? Like it's there's going to be slight variations, but this is it's the same system. Yeah. Because I got a couple friends up in Canada, and they ask me about that. They're like, "Well, is it going to be the same for me?" And I'm like, "Again, I'm not the rabbit hole bottom, dude. You're gonna. I can tell you that I've heard a lot of people say, yes, it's very similar, but you are always every case is going to be different. You're going to have to figure your own shit out because." Everybody's got different set of circumstances. Yeah, uh, I think. I mean, I've think... never had a passport, so I don't have to deal with. I'm not trying to update or change or anything else. I've never had one in my life. Um, there's a lot of shit. Like I've been taking care of my mom for three years, so I haven't. I guess I hired the tax lawyers, whatever, to deal with her shit, and they filed a tax return for me for the last two years. But I didn't file a tax return this year, and I don't plan to. I didn't work. I didn't make any money. I'm not going to send them a piece of paper just to keep them off my back when I could give two shits about them anyway. So it's like, no. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a completely non enacted title that that is only accessible through voluntary compliance. Right. Which a lot of so, times ends up from acquiescence. People don't realize what they're doing and they get sent shit and they just go, well, I don't know what that even says. So they just throw it away. And then it's like, now you're this for sure. Well, a lot of it too is just is just they they get a job and they're told they need to fill out a W nine and then they're told that you know this is what everyone does and they're not allowed to even have the job if they don't fill it out. Yep. And nobody in the fucking world knows what a goddamn W nine is. Yep. It's literally that simple. And that you can uh, fill out um, on your W-4. When you look at it and read the back, you can fill out zeros for every column, write exempt at the bottom, and as long as you update it every single year at before February 14th, they won't take any taxes out of you at, at all either. I don't know about that. I mean, I, I've never really looked at that too much, but that, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's probably what it is because it has to be that way because, because you can Title read a, 26 is not positive law. It's not you, positive law. You can, you can read a thing on the back, right? It, yep, and that's exactly what this is. There's a spot on the back that says uh, uh, stipulations for if you would be held exempt, and it says if you feel like you're going to be uh, liable for for tax, for whatever the term that they use, you look that term up and it's not, you are not liable for that. So again, you're, you're not reading the terms. You're saying, yeah, I mean, I guess I'd be liable for taxes in this federal fiscal year or whatever it is, the way they term it out. And then you look up and you're like, no, I'm not fucking liable for that at all. So you can put zero and exempt. And as long as you update it on the date that they tell you to on the, in that same little paragraph on the back in the instructions, you're good to go. And people yeah, have I been see doing that. that. I'm so looking it's... at it right now. Exemption from withholding. You may claim exemption from withholding for 2023 if you meet both of the following conditions. You had no federal income tax liability in 2022, and you expect to have no federal income tax liability in 2023. Yes. Um, and, and, and you don't have federal income tax liability. You don't have that. That's interesting. I didn't realize this. This is interesting. And so you just go zeros all the way down, you write exempt, you sign it, and then you hand it back to them. And then they don't bitch out because it's not a weird form. And as, and again, as long as you update it every year at their date, then you're good to go. And I've heard this from a lot of people who've done it. So I'm like, okay. So again, there's a lot of ways to do a lot of this stuff. And and so I'm learning as much as I can and, and I'm going to just be out of the system. And I'm so, so grateful that I've gotten all this information. And it is, it's an obsession because you just like, oh my God, there's so much shit here. Wow. And then it gets it's interesting. Into the... I'm going to probably use this. Thank you. This is interesting. I never seen that. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah. It doesn't say on here. Um, Does it, it, says, give it... it? The only problem with this is it says employer, employee. If you look at the definition of employee, it's kind of weird. Um, but you can put on there like, uh, I don't know. You can sign it like not an employee or something. I don't know. Um, I do that kind of shit all the time. Yeah, I think when you sign things, how wh- how what you put there matters. So yeah, you know. Yeah, I do like without yeah. prejudice by Williams, comma Brandon Joe agent uh, for Brandon Joe Williams all caps slash principal, and then I put uh, on the side of it, I put like agent is not an employee. Um, that's how right. I would sign something like this, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's and- it's. Yeah, it's interesting. 
You can yeah. just put exempt. Where do you put exempt extra withholding deduction? So you write it on the line that's like it doesn't even seem it, – it's literally at the bottom. There's It's just a line that separates the, the box from below where you would sign. So there's a box in the, and there's shit down there, words, and then a signature line. That line that separates that those words and all the other boxes above it, you write exempt right there. There's a, like there's no space for it. There's no – it's just you write exempt. It says – uh, it's like literally right below the last box that oh, would be on, an option. See. It says, uh, uh, certify that you meet both of the conditions above by writing exempt on form W4 in the space below step 4C. So let me just, I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to show yeah. this. This is interesting. Cause I get, you know, you get a lot of problems with the W A B E N. I mean, I like doing it. I like to fucking rip people apart and shit. It's fun, but no, you know, not everybody likes that shit. So down here, on the back of the W four, like when when I fucking turned in my my, I remember my boss. He he learned about me doing all this shit, and then all of a sudden he got freaked out, and he had me fill out a W nine. And I said, oh no, I ain't filling out no W nine. And I got on the phone with his accountant, and I said, bro, I don't live in the United States. I'm like, what's the definition of the United States? He's like, uh, and I go, bro, I'll show you all the definitions right now. And he like totally fucking flipped out. And he was like, I don't have time for this shit. Like, fuck you, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And, and, and I said, look, you're either accepting a WABEN or, or this is, you know, I'm, this is over. I'm done, you know? Right. Uh, and then they said, okay, never mind. They, they didn't take anything. They wouldn't take the WABEN or nothing. They wouldn't take anything from me. They said, just forget about it. <laughs> awesome. I said, all right. And then, and then, and then they said, uh, and then, and then they said, uh, you know, we'll just keep, We'll just keep paying your corporation. We can't pay your trusts. Uh, you can only pay your corporation. Oh, I said, okay, no problem. Went home, created a trust of the same name as my corporation. And I kept, I, I took all the same checks and I put them all in my trust every single month. Yeah. They and I told them I was putting in the corporation. They're so fucking stupid, bro. Right. So fucking stupid. Yeah. So, um, can't fucking put Yeah, right. By February 15th. There it is. Sure. Fuck. Uh, so, uh, this is, um, the back of the W-4 form, right? So here we have uh, what you're talking about is right here. Certify that you meet both of the conditions above by writing exempt on form W-4 in the space below step 4C. So if we go back up, 4C is yep. right here. So it's like gay and weird. Look, it's literally, there's nothing here. Yeah. Yep. You're supposed to just write it literally in this like blank area under 4C, but there's like no information here whatsoever. And sign it and date it, and 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 you can sign it however you want. They don't give a shit because you're just exempt. You're just telling them, "Hey, I am exempt based on your shit that you wrote on the back." Bye. <laughs> Interesting. You just write. There's no line for it at all. It's just a blank area. Again, that's just how they hide it from you. Why would you think you can't even put something there unless you read the back, and you're like, "Oh, damn, that's actually a space for some shit." Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I never, I never <laughs> yeah. knew that. Wow. Right. Yeah. So, hey, man, that's how I'm saying I, I, I learned some shit. I, I showed you some shit. So uh, you've showed me like, you know, 99 percent and and I've shown you like 0.01. So I feel like I've, I've done something good. That's no, good. That's that's <laughs> pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Exemption from withholding. Yeah. OK, there you go. And there there's, there's okay. that date. I was saying they just just submit a new one by February 15th. Interesting. And then they see again. So when you get out of the system, you can then file a tax return and just claim your exemptions. They send you a W-2 if you're from your work, and then you counter that with a oh damn, I don't I don't remember the name of it, but it's 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 literally you're totally tax exempt, you owe nothing, and then you can actually claim your benefits from the state still. Like, I, I haven't gotten there. I don't know how to do all that shit yet, but I know that there's people doing that. I know so, a lot of people doing a lot of crazy shit with the tax system. I right. just, I don't like it. I don't like it, and I don't want to mess with it. I just don't want them to asking me for any more money. And then I'll be like, cool. Yeah, I, the people were like, oh, you should go back and get all your previous money. You should do this. You should do that. And I got friends like Joe Lustica, my buddy. He's really into all this. He's like finding a way to like tie it into the securities. Now, one area that I do find kind of interesting that Joe Lustica showed me and a couple other people showed me too is how you can you can you can use the IRS as a reporting arm to strong arm the credit companies into giving you infinite credit and dealing with your securities because you report the securities as a taxable event. And like, there's some, there's some kind of bulldog looking shit too, that people are doing using the IRS as a, as a weapon. Yeah. Wow. 
that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I do think that that's a uh, very useful, uh, I, I know that you can actually send a, uh, let's say you someone owes you money. You can actually write up a contract, send it to the treasury and have the treasury collect for you on the debt. They'll take like a 35% commission. They'll use the IRS to do it. <laughs> wow. That's so, that, so, so using, using the uh, weaponizing the IRS is a, is a really, really fascinating, uh, really, really, uh, cool, useful. It's useful it, 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 on a pragmatic sense. It's also useful in a mental spiritual sense, because now the, the, the IRS isn't a bulldog that's looking at you. It's the bulldog looking at others to help you. Yeah. You fed the dog steak and now it's your friend and you're like, okay, now yeah. let's look at that. Go get that guy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so there's some of that as well. Like, uh, like a yeah. 30, 34, 84 form, something like this, like a complaint form that you can use 34, 94, something like that. I forget the name of it. Uh, a lot of people like a 34, 94 form IRS, uh, 3949A. Uh, I believe this is the correct form. Um, 39. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, this, this, uh, there's a complaint, it's a complaint form 3949A form D- describe the alleged violation of income tax law, wow. false exemption, false deduction. It's basically a tattletale form. Yeah, sure. It's a fucking snitch form. Basically. Yeah. There's a comment section. Um, do you consider the taxpayer dangerous? Yes or no. <laughs> Right. He threatened my life. So yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's <laughs> it's a it's a very interesting it's a very interesting form. Uh some people are using the 39, the 3949A form to turn the IRS into like an angry, vicious bulldog uh, to go after the credit card companies and stuff like that. I'm I'm gonna go the litigation route. Uh I've had people uh report to me that they've tried to use the OCC, the um the office of the comptroller of the currency and the sec, the securities exchange commission. And it didn't really go anywhere. Uh, from, from my experiences, the reports that I've gotten, uh, litigation is, is, is rapid and, and pretty painless, uh, remedy, uh, for infinite money and securities violations. So to get into, uh, I feel like for me where I'm at now, uh, getting into all this IRS shit, it's sort of like veering off the road a little bit for me. Um, I don't really, you know, it is. We'll see. Yeah, it's a whole different rabbit trail. It's a whole nother section. You're well, like, Jesus, I don't dude, how know many rabbit trails within how many rabbit people, trails? How many people have I met that have gotten infinite money uh, uh, remedy using the OCC? Uh, zero. How many people do I know that have gotten infinite money remedy using the SEC? Zero. How many people do I know who have gotten infinite money remedy by using uh, IRS forms and turning the IRS into a bulldog? Uh, zero. How many people do I know that have gotten infinite money remedy uh, using litigation? It's almost everyone I talk to that goes down that 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 rabbit hole. And usually it's very rapid. Like right out the gate, they're trying to settle. It's 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 not. It, I've never once ever heard of it going to trial. I've never even heard of them bluffing that they want to take it to trial. Really? Never. Not they once. They know that they're at fault. Then period. And they're like, they know, oh, they God. know, they know that they are completely fucked, and they don't want anybody finding out about this. Wow, awesome. They want to seal that bitch up and put it in the fucking tomb right away. Yeah. Wow. So, um, uh, so do you that's... do you do you deal with arbitration much? Have you had do you had to do no. any of that? No, no. That's 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 what I said. That's my next. That's this it. is my next. That's this it. is it. Okay. So, so, that's, so okay. the, the right. so, so we're, we're, we've done six advanced course videos so far, yeah. uh, in the near future, pretty much most of the next several advanced course videos over the next several months are probably all going to be litigation based. That's where everything is moving. Yeah. Everything is moving into that. Everything. That's calling them on their bluff. The 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 best way you can do it, I guess. You know, what I mean, well, that's well, literally well, fighting fire with fire. We've exhausted infinite money. We've had we've had a small percentage of people have success without litigation. If we want to move the train forward and we want to get success on what we started, this is where we have to go. There's no other. There's no other routes. There's no other anything. I've 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 mailed many different things. I've I've not gotten remedy. Um, this is it. This is I'm I'm at the end of the this is it. This is there's no more runway for me. Litigation right. is is the is the the next train station 
whether I like it or whether anyone else likes it doesn't make any fucking difference. It is the next train station. I've already accepted that it's the next train station. I'm just not pulling into that train station at 450,000 miles an hour. I'm pulling into that train station at like one mile an hour. Yeah. Uh, so, so it will happen and it is happening. Um, and you're dressed appropriately for it too. Yeah. And I got my, 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 I got, you know, people, people were fucking loving it, bro. I fucking lit yeah. that place up, bro. Lit yeah. that place up. So I bet just based so, on the, de- the description you gave, I was like, hey, yeah, that's flashy shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. You walk in like you own the place sort of, even though in my head I was terrified. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, I thought I was going to be fucking dragged in someplace. You know what the fuck you doing here? Walking around all the different floors, you know? <laughs> uh, so, so, so um, yeah, that's, that's where we're headed. There are a bunch of people who have already done a bunch of this. It, it, it definitely does. Now that I'm starting to kind of dip my foot in the water, it does seem that uh, uh, it's a lot simpler than, than we all think it is just like everything else. It's, it's a, uh, it, there, there is an a illusory aspect of it being extremely complicated. I think um especially when you look at some of the old conditional acceptances that I've written, uh, a lot of those documents were more complicated than a lot of the litigation documents. Yeah. So, so, so anybody who's ever written a conditional acceptance is probably already like, like 75% of the way there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Or or maybe even like 85% of the way there, like legit, literally. So sweet. uh, so we, we, we're, we've, we're on our way. This is where we're headed. We've, we've got all the tools that we need. We've got everything that we need. And now we are uh, just moving towards that next train station, which is litigation. You know, to uh, the we'll, bone. Probably, we'll probably start with um, civil litigation and then we'll move from there into criminal litigation. And then obviously the, the top tier uh, uh, of this informational uh, station will probably be at this particular station for quite a long time. Uh, the top tier will be like full blown grand jury trials. That'll probably be obviously like the top, top, top tier. Yeah. By the time you get to that level though, I mean, you're, you're basically like the, the, the upper one, like less than 1% of the the whole legal profession on the, on yeah. the planet, literally. The one percenters of the one percenters, shit, yeah. shit, dude. Top of the you're, top. You're basically the top of the top at that point, you know. And I, and and like like I like everything I do in my life, I want to be a, a a full professional. Uh, I want to I want to take it to the 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 maximum level that I can. So I have my sights set at that level. That's where I want to go. So, brilliant, yeah. man. Awesome. Well, thanks for being a trailblazer in that regard. And uh, and like I said, the crumbs that you that you leave off for, for I consider them crumbs, man, because I can't absorb all of it. But uh, I'm I'm working on it and I'm getting it and I'm getting it pretty well, better than I thought I was gonna for studying law, which is really what this is. I mean, it's just like holy shit, I'm studying law. But uh, <laughs> no, you know everyone, what I mean? Like everyone yeah, sh- says that I can't yeah. believe I'm doing this. You know, I know, right? Like I'm looking into law, but it it's fucking fascinating, man. And so I think if you've got that desire, if it, if it hits you right, and then then do it. Why not do it? Know it because this is uh, you know, until the system, like you said, gets blown the shit up. Uh, it's it's what runs things right now, so it, it behooves us to know this shit. Yeah, and thank God we have a a, a legal system where they actually still care to some degree. Um, yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, they don't care. They're not gonna, you know, no, they do. They do. This this is again, this is a religious activity. They wear a black robe up there on their fucking wooden whatever because this is a religious activity. This yep. is a religious activity. And and some people are like, oh, it's necromancy, and that's why they wear the black robe and they're raising the dead and all this shit. I I look at it simpler than that. There is these codes, which is the B- Bible religious text. These are tomb. These are these are um, these are these are religious tomes. Okay, and they are followed. Yep. They are commandments and tomes, and they are followed, mm-hmm. and 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 they are followed as though they are the word of God. And yeah. As long as you learn the word of God and you and you show up as a foreign friend to the court and you pay, you're paying for a service. And you can and you can file documentation that's like pauper uh level shit where you can get like you fill out like a like an application form for pauperized status. And 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 I had a buddy of mine just do that and his his whole court case was approved. And they they pay the court fees out of the winnings of the court case when you do it that way. Hmm. Or you can just pay, I paid $435 to start my court case with the uh, name change process. So uh, it appears to be a pretty standard amount of money, uh, $435 in LA anyways, probably a lot cheaper everybody else, everywhere else. Um, And then, uh, or you can do the proper I status, try to get it for free on an application. Uh, And then, um, 
and then you submit all your documentation, which I've seen some really, really simple submissions like a cover letter with the basic information of the jurisdiction and, and what they're looking for and, and what the problem was and what happened. And then the, an attached affidavit that explains what actually occurred in great detail. I've seen some shit literally that simple. Wow. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to get into all of that. How simple is it really? Uh, how do you file it? Uh, and then, and then from there we'll get into, you know, I do not think a lot of what we're doing will wind up, you know, most of it's just filing the documentation and then getting it served and then they settle. Like I, a lot of the infinite money stuff is like that. It's not like you're in court battling and fucking going at it. Like, it's really not like that. If you, if you show up armed to the fucking teeth, they, 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 they have already got the documentation because when they get served the documentation for the lawsuit, it's got all that information in the documentation. So they look at the documentation and they say, oh, there's no fucking way in hell. There's not even <laughs> right. to show up to this. Um, yeah, they, they see their imminent death in front of them. They're like, yeah. oh, we're doomed. Yeah. So, so you think to yourself like, oh, litigation, I need to, I need to be ready for like these fucking heated courtroom battles. And I don't think, I don't think a lot of what we're doing is ever going to wind up there. And I then, agree, and then, yeah. and then, and then if it does, it'll be like a summary judgment type, you know, like local court where it's just a judge and a prosecutor and very little of it. I mean, it has to be a, a, I believe it has to be a felony and it has to be a criminal court for it to go to a jury trial. Hmm. Uh, a lot of the security stuff actually would qualify for that. So you can scare the fuck out of the banks doing that. But, but, but have I ever heard of any of this stuff ever going anywhere within a hundred fucking miles of a, of a jury trial? No, never. Yeah. I mean, a bank or anybody big like that is going to pay you so much money to get you to just go away. Yeah. Like, here you go. Here you go. Bye. 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 Yeah. So, 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 so I do want to learn all that, but, but, but it's sort of like, uh, do I need to learn how to drive a, a an 800 horsepower motorcycle when all I'm going to be driving around is 180 horsepower motorcycle all the time? You right. know, it's, 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 it becomes sort of like a, just a, a curiosa at that point. It's just right, like, fuck sure. it. like, I just want to do it because I want to do it. It's you know? like realizing you're on a mountain and then they're, oh shit, it goes up a little higher. Well, why not go up to the top? <laughs> you know it's kind of like that. It's kind of yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, well, plus think about this. If, if you can litigate at those levels, then, then it's even 10 times more terrifying for anybody that you want to, that you want to yeah. litigate against, because it's like, it's like, it's like, I've already done this, bro. I've yeah, already done like, jury trials. Like right, once you've right. already done jury trial, it's like it's it's fucking game over, bro. Like they don't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You you're, 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 you're like, holding all the trump cards and you're just like, which one do you want me to play? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the big huge monster tattooed guy that like runs the whole gang in, in prison. It's like you, you don't you it's like, all right, what do you want, bro? Like, I'm not gonna what am I gonna do? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So so it's kind of the same, it's kind of the same idea. And um cool, man. Well, shit, dude, it's getting to be three hours, and uh, this was a badass. Uh, this was a badass interview again. So, yeah, man. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, this is going to be great. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to call it. I'm going to have to kind of ponder on that one. Um, I mean, we covered uh, traffic and and motor vehicle and and that a lot. We went all over the place though. So this is just a badass three hours. Uh, getting yourself straight with uh, with legal. Uh, jargon and and understanding what the hell how to, how to be free really that's what all this is it's really just a more steps on how to get yourself free and how to actually get yourself to a point like you said where you use shit as a weapon as opposed to having it come at you and then there's like a turning it off the, so that it's neutral and then you can actually learn enough that you can rework it and and refocus it onto the the people that were fucking with you to begin with it's uh it's the matrix it's neo it's neo's path it's the yeah. same shit yep he was a little bitch and then and then he and then he realized that he can unplug and then he's like fuck it I'm going to replug back in he he trained and prepared himself to replug back into the system through all those training programs that were downloaded into his head and all those like VR training programs that he was doing with Morpheus where he was learning the various types of martial arts in that VR training program yep uh and then you had the VR training program where he was jumping from one building to the next with uh, Trinity and Trinity was saying like you have to you know free your mind to to be able to jump across to the other building and then he was doing this training. And then at that point he was able to re-enter the matrix and he used the matrix like a little bitch. Yeah. I think that'll be something that'll be some, that'll, that'll be the title. Something like the, uh, the, the training program for, 
for converting the matrix into your own tool or something something along those lines but that'll yeah. be it yeah for sure Re That's, yeah learning the matrix to uh to, to wield it as a weapon yeah well thanks yeah, re brother. Re reprogramming the matrix so it works for you and not works against you you know something yeah, like that. yeah absolutely well dude we'll stay in touch man um i you know uh we'll we'll do another one of these at some point down the road we'll keep learning and and sharing stuff and um i absolutely appreciate you coming on and doing this with me man thank you Love it, man. Thank you very much for having me on.